Oh, that's real. Color. Yeah, yeah, they, they, know, know. they know. They know. They know. They know. They know the color. They know the color when they see it. They know that's that Captain Kirk's Jamaican rum punch. I'm about to jump on this right now because we got an episode we want to get into. And this dude said when he drinks, he goes hard. So if we get him drunk, he's going to say some real shit. He's going to say some real yeah. shit. We're going to turn this into Club Shay Shay. Come on now. Come on, Shay Shay. Come on, Shay. Come on. You can't say that. Yo. Tone Rock in the building. Welcome back. Another exciting episode of Live from the Green Room. Trey Elliott. What's good? What's going on, man? Joe Feezy Fox. What's going on, people? What's going on? I was with you this past weekend, so yes. how was your weekend? My weekend was good, man. Easter was good. Uh, you know, just chill, real low key. Uh, it was a relaxed weekend, actually. I had a set at the um, Ha Ha in North Hollywood this uh -huh. past weekend, so that was cool, man. So, but laid back weekend overall. I, um, I kind of think I got myself in trouble this past weekend because I said there's no Easter... I didn't think we were going to be working on Easter Sunday. Right. Yeah. I was looking at it like businesses are going to be closed. So uh -huh. we'll probably be closed too. Mm -hmm. So I told Charleston's mother, hey, there's no show Sunday. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, uh, yeah. It's and whenever you say there's no show to a woman and then you got to go back and say there's a show later, oh, yeah. they oh, think all of a sudden something's lied. up. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, now it's a show, nigga. Yeah. Who this bitch? You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, damn. And then I had to give the whole spiel like, listen, in the African American community, it's a giant. Easter's huge to us. Right, yeah. right. But I didn't think businesses would be open. So yeah. while I did know it was big, mm -hmm. I didn't think, you know, so I was like, I didn't, I wasn't trying to like, you know, be sneaky or like that. I just right, didn't right. think. You could tell I've been in LA too long because I went to church on Saturday. <laughs> I got it, <laughs> I got it out the way. You know what I mean? Got it out I, the I way. Got, it was like an hour church, non denominational, white, white, you know, like white preacher. When I say we was in and out for an hour, because I. Wait, why would you up. do that? Why, who was, who you with? Uh, uh, my girl's brother invited and his family invited him. To a white church? Uh, uh, a non-denominational. So black people go there, but it was a white a, preacher. A lot of white folks. You wow. know, so I ain't been to church in a long time. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it a buck. So I went, you know, the praise and worship. They don't call it praise and worship. They just call it singing. It was, it was. Yeah, this is white shit. Yeah, they just it. call it singing. Yeah. What you described it was, they just white call it singing. Singing. Singing, singing, was, singing moment. Singing was trash. I don't lie. <laughs> 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 Big outfit. Sorry, Lord. <laughs> yeah, but singing was, you know, trash. You know what I mean? It was but, trash. Yeah, yeah, but, hilarious. you know, it just felt good just to kind of just be in a, in some kind of house right. of God. Okay. I like, I ain't, been, I ain't been in nothing in a long time, so. Not even Well, you don't have to be in the house of God. You could be, to be one with God. Like, I don't, I'm not a religious person, but I'm very spiritual. My relationship yeah. with the Most High is like this. Yeah. So I don't call myself a this or a that. I'm here. And I still knew the stories. He was talking about he the still resurrection. The I'm like, yeah, hey, Peter, yeah, the, the rooster crowed three times. Like, I knew it. I still knew the info. I was 30 like, pieces right, of silver. We, we ain't going to turn this into the 700 Club. We're going to introduce our guests, and then we'll get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, comedian, actor, uh, voice specialist? What, are you, what would you consider? Impersonator. Impersonator of, of, of the impersonators. I really feel like he doesn't get as many as, as much props as he should for his impersonations. I think they give the white comics more props for their impersonations that you actually do better, in my opinion. But we'll get into that. Yeah. But let me introduce him, give him a proper intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the green room. Aries Spears, y'all. Aries Spears in the building. Aries. I, I gotta say off the cuff, man, uh, this is kind of surreal for me because I was telling my podcast partner, Andy Steinberg, I was like, if I'm being completely honest, I thought for a long, well, first of all, let me say this, just to put it in context. So I reached out to you because somebody that watches our podcast was like, yo, Tony got a podcast. Yes. I think you would be a great guest. My man K, it. shout out to my man K. Yeah, so I was apprehensive because I'm like, if I'm being honest, I don't even think Tony likes me. Uh -oh. And here's why <laughs> I say this. Okay. I don't know if this is part manhood, man macho shit, New York shit, that energy shit. Because I know us New Yorkers, we come with a certain energy. And I like every time I see Tony in passing at the Laugh Factory or in public, we don't say shit to each other. Like we barely <laughs> make eye contact. And when we do, not saying that's what it is, right. but it's got a energy to it. Okay. okay. So, so I was like, you know what? It's one of them things where, one, and I and I and I'm gonna say something else to you later down the line. Okay. But it's one of them things where I'm like, I want him to know that I really dig him as a comedian. Nice. But I know how a lot of people feel about me. So right. I'm not about to put myself out there and get the cold shoulder. And now I got a reason to go. Yeah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, people so won't. the fact that you responded back as quickly as you did. And then you was like, yeah, let's rock. 
Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Well, can I clear all of that right now? Well, number one, I thought once K, just my, your boy K, right? Yeah, yeah. Hit me. I was like, oh, Aries would be an incredible guest. Yeah. So that's number one. It wasn't even a second thought. Secondly, it is New York shit. It okay. is absolutely New York shit. Because New York cats is like, yo, I, we said this before on the podcast. New York dudes are like this. Even if you're famous, New York dudes are like, yo, I'm famous too. Right. Whether right. they famous right. or not, whether they right. in entertainment or not, New York dudes yeah, are like, yo, yeah, yeah. I get money too. Right. I get bitches too. Like whoever, right. the, whoever it is, they'll be like, yo, I'm famous too. <laughs> right. So we never really fan out for anybody. Right. 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 Now, with that said, I have always been a fan. Wow. You've been you've been doing stand up longer than I have. I saw you on TV before I even started doing stand up. Wow. I remember you at the Apollo. Right. As a youth, and I was like oh, young, wow. like yo, 17. and I, look, and I, so I was probably yeah, yeah, 16, 15, and I was like, yo, this cat is doing it, like, right. so I've always known who you are. You were always like in this comedy uh, stratosphere as far as I'm concerned. Right, but you know, it, but the th third and lastly uh -oh. is I have heard the numerous, numerous stories of right. negativity when it comes to Aries Spears. Yeah. So I was always, and you guys will yeah. probably say the same. Yeah. So I've always been like, yo, I, I, see, I hear so much about him. Maybe he don't just, he don't talk to people. So I would always be like, well, I guess I let the stories, yeah. you know, kind of put a buffer in between being a real dude with you. Right. And I remember one time we were on a flight. I don't know if you remember this. We was on a flight and we were both flying first class. And I was like, you were already on the plane. And I was walking to my seat and you just went like, like as I was on pass, you went, and I just looked down like, oh, shit, what's up, bro? And he was like, what up? And that was it. We just like, what yeah. up, what up? And I was like, okay, I guess we cool. Like, yeah. that would be the extent of it because we two New York dudes. <laughs> so what up, what up means like, yo, how you doing? Hope everything's yeah. good with you. Mm -hmm. Hope you get there How's safely. The How's the family? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's everything for New York cat. Right. Yeah. There. But we could jump right into that. Like, so I'm sure you have heard, have had to have heard but, so much negative stuff about yourself. You it, know, it's, it's, it's almost two things. Uh, number one, I think, and I'm always a big fan of, yo, man, do self-investigation. Because we live in a business and a world where this shit is high school. And the cool right. kids sit with the cool kids and the jocks with the jocks right. and the preps with the preps. So a lot of times people hear shit and rather than do self-investigation to see what's what, right. they just go off what they hear and assume, okay, that's who you are. And, you know, one of my favorite comedians of all time is Patrice O'Neill. Uh, the the greatest. Yeah. the greatest. And I remember uh, Patrice on Opie and Anthony was talking about how the perception of him from certain people would, would come because he was so aloof. And to, to some people, they take aloof for asshole. Right. And it's like, dude, I've, I, you know, I, I didn't come up like most people in the comedy game where like, you know, if you was from Boston, you had a Boston click. If you was from yeah. New York, a New York click. I started when I was 14. So I couldn't even hang out in the clubs without my mother. And I had to hang in like the back room or a, damn near a closet, mm. do my set, leave immediately because of drinks. And right. so I never had a chance to develop a, 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 a camaraderie with the comedy community. So I was always a loner. Right. I was always quiet to myself because that's what I knew from about 14 to about 20. Okay. So that's just, you know, that's just been my makeup. Who's been, what, so you started at 14, who were your friends in comedy? Not that you, not like your, somebody that you considered like a, a peer or contemporary. Bill Bellamy. Bill Bellamy. Bill Bellamy. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, that Jersey area. Right. You know, we came up with guys like Hamburger, Derek Fox, Cool Bubba Ice, uh, shout out to you know, Cool Bubba Ice is quietly one of the Teddy funniest Carpenter. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, shout out to Teddy Carpenter. The only yeah. one I really gravitated towards was really like Bill. Okay. And vice versa. And you, uh, so we'll go back, we'll go back and then come back to all this. So yeah. how did you start? What's Aries Spears beginning? Like you saw a movie, you, you, you know, saw a comic, uh, somebody was funny. What was, what was I, that story? You know, prior is of course my dad's era. Yeah. My era yeah. was Murphy. Yeah. But you know, I feel like if you're going to be good in anything, you got to be a student of the game. So whether it was me going back and watching movies with Man Tan Mall and Step and Fletch at Moms Mabley, you know, and some of those guys that came way before them, that's where the education starts. Okay. So, you know, my, my schooling in comedy started then, but my appreciation and love for it came when, it, you know, Eddie Murphy on SNL, me and my dad, that was our ritual. Mm -hmm. Saturday nights. Bro, same household. Me, me and him, and when I saw Eddie, it was just something between the impressions, the characters, he just popped. But then again, it wasn't hard for him to pop in because Saturday Night Live, and at that point, wasn't what it was when it started. Right. With yeah. Gilda Radner, right. Belushi, Murray. Right. So, you know, um, and when I saw 48 Hours in Trading Places, that solidified. That's yeah, yeah. I said, this, I want to be that nigga right there. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. he just, he jumped off that screen, man. That, I think that's every, I think if you're black, a young, right. if you're a black man comic, maybe, maybe even females, and you started, if you're a certain age range, 
Eddie's the guy. Right. He might not be your favorite, but he is definitely the guy that made you say, holy shit, look at what comedy can do. Yeah. Because my guy was Richard. So yeah. my, like you said, my parents had the record collection. Right. I would sneak and listen to Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Mm -hmm. And those are the three that were always like, holy shit, this is, I can't even wrap my mind around what I'm listening to. Yeah. I would go to school and tell the jokes and get in trouble. Right. And then my mother's like, well, that's what he does for a living. Mm -hmm. And Richard was just the guy to me. Richard was like, I saw him on TV. Oh shit, that's the guy from the record. Saw him in movies. Wait, that's the guy from the TV show and the record. So he does everything. I want to be that guy. Right. But Eddie was the guy that made, I think all of us blew up. Eddie was the guy that blew all our minds because Eddie looked and acted more like us right. yeah. than right. Richard. You know what I mean? Than Bill. Yeah. So Eddie was the guy that made young black men go, holy shit, like yeah. I think I can do that too. Right. But you also I mean? the, the, the fact that Eddie Murphy was doing so much at that time, I didn't even know that the stand-up part was until he did uh, Delirious. And that was like surrounding, in, in the midst of SNL, right. uh, 48 Hours, Beverly Hills Cop, all that was in the same thing. So when I saw him do Delirious, like that's what made it real for me as far as like doing stand-up. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's funny because, uh, my, again, my, my podcast partner and I, this past weekend, when we recorded, we actually talked about this because Richard Pryor is his guy. And listen, I, I, it would be blasphemous for me to say anything about the go. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right, they right. They to this moment. Right, now, right. Now, but that being said, let me say this. To me, I always kind of felt like, and I guess I'll ask the question to y'all as comics, why did it seem like movie-wise Richard didn't have the kind of career that Eddie had? And then the flip is, how come Eddie didn't have the kind of stand-up career that Richard had because uh, Richard had a, a million albums. Yeah, his 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 stage performances were so gritty and what they were. Yep. And and listen, we know Eddie's one of the best geniuses and icons in comedy. Box office bonanza superstar, yep. but only two specials. Yeah, and mm. and it's it's been teetering on whether or not to even return to stand up. Can I can I go go no go go go? I want I want to go last. Go. Okay, well I I I can say this as far as. Um, I do it in reverse. So Eddie, with this stand up, he got big, and and he got big quick. So once you start doing the movies and getting as big as he got, and Hollywood kept knocking on his door for this actor, for this comedic actor, and and getting all his money, it's kind of like I felt like he didn't really have time on his head. He was like, "Yo, I'm getting all this money here. I'm I'm a solidified superstar here. I don't really need to go back." to comedy right now or sometimes you getting so busy you're getting offered so many opportunities to where you're like oh shit i ain't i haven't done comedy like i'm supposed to in, in x amount of years it's kind of like yo i'm i'm in this arena now so i'm too big I'm, I'm i'm too big but but if you a comic to your core is aren't don't you stay in the comedic gym it, yeah. but no matter yeah. what i see both sides of what you're saying yeah. I, see, I see both sides of what you're saying yeah. but i also agree with that is that eddie he hit home runs every time, like right, forty-eight right, hours right. training places. Hills, no, this, yeah. He was hitting whole, he was hitting grand down. slams out <laughs> out the gate every time, yeah. right? So then, yes, all that money's coming in, and yes, these guys are writing the movie for you, so you just go perform it. So it's not like as right. you don't have to be as dedicated right. with stand up, you know, as as dedicated as you ha would have to be. And stand up. Now, what are you going to talk about? But right, the like pressure too. But like you said, if you love this to your core. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that makes me always, like gives me pause, it's like, wow, he, I thought he loved it like I love it. I thought he loved it like right. Richard loves it and my brother loves it. I thought he loved it like we love it. And I, it, it kind of makes me sad that I, that I see like he didn't because mm -hmm. he didn't, he never came back. Right. And I will give you side note. I don't know what you do whenever you have writer's block or you do or you do. Mm -hmm. Whenever I have writer's block, which is rare, I write as if I'm somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what if I was, what if I was Richard Pryor? Let me try to write 10 minutes if I was Richard right. Pryor. Uh -huh. Just to keep get the pen moving. Now, it's material right. I'll never use because it doesn't pertain to me, right. but it's just to get the pen moving. Right. I got a whole hour special written for Eddie Murphy right now. I told <laughs> Arsenio <laughs> several times, yo, I wrote, I started writing and I just right. kept going. And if Eddie ever wants this material, I will hand it to him and ask nothing in return. Mm. If he tours the material to try to get ready for the special, I would just only ask that I be the opening, opening act. <laughs> But it's his material. It's for it's like that is it is yo look. It's 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 when I was I was the biggest comedian in the world. Like just come out. Right. Picture this. He comes out on stage and says, 
I was the biggest motherfucker in the world. All these motherfuckers you see now doing comedy are because of me. Boom. All these internet dudes are because of me. Right. I was the most famous motherfucker in the world before there was Instagram. And thank God there was no Instagram because my best friend was Rick James. <laughs> Could you imagine the shit we would have had on TikTok and Instagram and, right, right. and just go right there? And then how big he was, the pussy he got, the stories he could tell. Charlie got famous, tell mm -hmm. some Charlie stories, and then end it with, I was so big. One night I'm in the house and I'm like, let me get out here and drive around in my new Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving down Sunset Boulevard and I turn and I make a right and i make a left and i end up on santa monica boulevard and there's this girl on the corner and i'm like i'm eddie murphy i can fuck any girl i want <laughs> hey girl what you doing on the corner what you do come get in this car and just end it with that shit right mm. bro yeah yeah right. he's back you know it, yeah. it's funny too because uh i like how tongue-in-cheek eddie was with it to show you how he moves which mm. is you know to know you the baddest motherfucker ever but you don't really have to say it right but he teetered with it when he did that interview. And they said he Kev broke his record? I gotta get back. Kev's Come on, record. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Kev's record. He was like, I ain't just stayed up in 20 years. Kev <laughs> yeah, yeah, broke yeah, my record. Yeah, yeah. I knew exactly. I knew oh, he was gonna say that. Yeah, I was like, he's I'm letting you know without letting you know, but he's letting you know. He letting you know, yo, Kev's the reason why I'm the reason why Kev right, does this. Right. I'm right. the reason why all you niggas do this. But he right. still he really has the, the ability, and you can tell during his interviews, yes. he still got the comedic chops. You never lose that. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, Even when he gets an award, like that little yeah, five his minute, award, it's like, oh, yo, he crushed. Mark Twain award. He, right. he yeah. kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just think it's like, damn, really the pressure of trying to figure out what I'm going to talk about. Right. And then to flip it with Richard, I think Richard was really the comedian at heart. You cut you yeah. cut his his veins, comedy's gonna come Jokes, out. Yeah. He just like, uh, I got some movie shit I gotta do. Uh, I think he yeah. probably took that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't really wanna do this movie shit. They say yeah. I gotta do it. I don't really right. give a fuck. If it if it do good, it do good. If not, it's not. Superman. Well, well, I don't give well, well the question to me that begs to be That's answered. That's a good answer. Yeah. 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 Uh because listen, and, and this is subjective. Yeah. But I just never thought Richard on screen was as good as Eddie. Nah. Now, is that because he's not getting worthy scripts? But if you're Richard Pryor at that time, the big, the equivalent to Eddie in the eighties. Right. Right. Why wouldn't you so. be? So is the, is it about the material or he? Because listen, I tell people all the time, just because you graded stand up is not an automatic birthright to being good at movies. No, absolutely. It's not, a, it's absolutely. not an automatic transition. No. Just because you just because you got a million followers don't mean you right. Can, yeah. You you, right. you could be a, a a smash hit on a TV show comedically and artistically. It's not a birthright to another forum. It right. just it just isn't. But I, I would often call Eddie Murphy Jordan because I'm like there was no weaknesses in his game, from stand up to TV to film, he could do it all. Yeah. Only uh, also go Fox. Oh, I'm gonna give you one. Sing thing. It. The album. Sing no, it. No, this is no, the, well, <laughs> the singing. <laughs> the singing. <laughs> no, no, no. Eddie can sing, but Jamie sings. Come on, Jamie yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie sang. Jamie sang. Jamie sang. Jamie sang. Eddie plays. So. But he went to school for that. Plays Jamie went to school. He went to art music school. He's trained. Yeah, he's trained. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing with with Eddie. And please fire back if you if you feel the need to. I watch. Live on the Sunset Strip. When I was 15, that shit was unbelievable. Mine blew me away. Mm -hmm. 10 years later, I'm 25. I watch it again. Like, this shit is still as good as yeah, the day I've seen right. it. Mm -hmm. 10 years later, I'm 35. Yo, this shit is still as good. The nuances, the the, the voices, yeah. and the and and you know, one one thing about Richard, mm -hmm. one of the gems, if you notice, I mean, you, you seem like a purist. You seem like you you know. Richard never does the you be like, I be like, he be like, and then she was like, and I was like, he just turns into the other person. Yes, mm -hmm. I never really noticed that. That's what, but that's why he. Every comic you watching him, you be like, and I be like, mm -hmm. and she was like, no, nope. and I was like, he never does that. He just goes, what the fuck you gonna do, nigga? I said I was, and you just know wow. that that's the other person. Right. And that's why the guys I watch today, like the com the comics that I watch in the clubs now, when I hear too much, man, you be like. And she'd be like, and he, I was like, and it, it's like, you, it's too much. It's too much. Just, just, just do it. Going. But here's back to Eddie. You watch Richard 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It's still great. You watch Delirious at 16. It's the funniest shit you ever saw. You watch it at 35. You're like, it's a little juvenile. Right, but it, it, it's it, a it, little it, juvenile. It, it, it is, That's the only knock. It, 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 That's the only knock. It, 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 it may be, but it still packs the comedic punch. 
Right. That, that, that for still, a comic soothes your soul. You still feel him doing well. It's like, it's, it's not like you hear it differently, but material wise, as a, I think you're saying that as a comedian. I think you do hear it differently. I think as you as, get older. As, as a comedian though, right? Because you're like, oh, I, 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 I can only say as a comedian, but I think people, that Richard Pryor uh, hunting and, and hunt, going hunting and the, uh, is that, you brought the gun? No, well then we got a problem because that's a bear. And yeah. the guy's like, well, which way are you going to run? No, I just want to know so I don't run you over. Right. That shit yeah. every single time, home run. So, and then you hear Goonie Goo Goo and you're like, Goonie Goo Goo. Oh, damn. That's what nah, I get it. Like, classic, but word. But let me okay. say this. The, uh, the, the fact that Eddie Murphy was a star when, he, when we really saw yeah. him as a stand-up is quite different than if you go back and see Richard's progression as right. a stand-up. So I think comedically he came up a little bit different and even as a young man, I don't know when he started, what, 20, 21? Who? Who, Eddie? No, no, Richard. Oh, oh. Richard, just his journey as a, as a stand-up is just totally different. But his comedy style, as far as what makes him the GOAT or a great comic, he uses everything. Every style, storytelling, mm. um, impersonation. Bears his soul. It bears his soul. Uh, his, his, his characterization of his act the clown style, the buffoon style. He was personifying everybody in his life, whereas Eddie Murphy didn't do it that way. It was just a different. Right. Plus, the thing style I think people seem to, real, to to always miss about the two of those guys when because they, they always that's the two they always compare. Eddie was a child. Mm -hmm. yeah, Richard Pryor was a grown man. True. Children, family. You know, Eddie was eighteen. Delirious was what twenty. He was like, yeah, he was like 21, 22. Right? Yeah, so he was a young dude just getting all this money and fame. Yeah. So he he wore it different. Yeah. Literally and figuratively, he wore it different. So, you know, Richard had grown man shit that he yeah. was dealing with. Plus his, back, his, his history of, you know, his horrible childhood. Right. He had like, uh, he was a tortured Bro, soul. So it's problem. just the difference in and how they grew said, up. And you said movies, his mo he was doing the small parts in other you know, with Billy D. Williams and Diana yeah. Ross, or whatever. <laughs> Car wash, he killed that. Yeah, yeah. so he was doing he the smaller bit parts. His movie career was totally different than Eddie. You know, as comedically, well. and, and obviously, you know, if if, if Cleavon Little hadn't done it, that would have been Richard Saddles, Blazing Saddles. That would have been that to me would have been his Mona Lisa, right? Because mm -hmm. the the tone of that movie, the rhythm of that movie was Richard all the way. Yeah. Everything else I had seen Richard in, even the Gene Wilder movies, I just mm -hmm. went, I don't get the same bite right. that you get from him on stage. Uh. Whereas with Eddie, everything, like you said, from, from his run, from the 80s all the way until mid-90s, late 90s, everything had bite. Yeah. I think they wrote movies differently for them too. Now that we're talking about it, when they wrote movies for Eddie, it was like this guy's a fucking superstar. Right. He is right. a superstar. We're writing a movie. They're writing the movie no differently than they would have written it for. Who was a big white comic at the time? Like who's the biggest white comic? Andrew Dice Clay. Well, yeah, at that, yeah, at that, yeah, at that time, yeah. John but I'm, you know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they wrote the movie for Eddie, like we're writing this shit for for, 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 or, for Jim Belushi or yeah. or fucking Sylvester Robin Stallone, Williams. like whoever. We're writing yeah. it the same way. Richard Pryor, they wrote. They, they didn't really write movies for black people to be the the big lead. I have to say this. I have to say this. I don't know if you ever saw this great interview, but uh, Richard's doing an interview, and the guy interviewing him, white guy goes, can white people write for you? And Richard just goes, yeah, if they write for the human in me. <laughs> that almost broke me down, dude. Yeah. So wow. to what you're saying, yeah, maybe it's a writer's thing. Yeah. Maybe they just saw the stereotypical loud mouth yep. on the corner yep. junkie, mm -hmm. yep. and they wanted that to be what it was, where I saw... I mean, I, I mean that as well. I mean that point right there, as well as they weren't writing movies for Richard. Like this guy is a bona fide superstar, superstar rock star almost. Eddie was a new was, level. Eddie took comedy to a new level. You know what I'm saying? I saw Chris in an interview when he was talking about Eddie, and he said Eddie just—you got the sense that as a black man, you were looking at a, at a hero and not somebody bucking and yeah. kowtowing and shucking yeah. and jiving. Right. And he just, he, he approached everything he did like, yo, I'm a man first. Mm -hmm. I'm a hero. I'm this. I'm everything on right. this level. So, yeah, again, to adhere to your point. Yeah. Exactly. That's like, I, I met, a uh, side note, I met uh, Angela Bassett once. Have you ever met Angela Bassett? Yes, I have. I, I met Angela Bassett one too. time. <laughs> I swear to you, I swear to you, it felt like I was meeting royalty. Yeah. She was so classy and so elegant, so yeah. like just smooth with her movement. 
And my brother said, this is my brother, Tony. And she just turned and said, hello, Tony. It's nice to meet you. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> like it wasn't like I was, it wasn't, like, it wasn't a chick. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a woman. It was like, I just met royalty. Yeah. Right. So I guess Eddie kind of had that persona as well. I've met Eddie several times, but it's always been, you know, he knows me because I'm Chris's brother. Mm -hmm. So it's always been love. And I kind of never really get to fan out because of that. Yeah. Because he's like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And I'm like, nah, nigga, I want to be like, holy shit. You know, but I just. <laughs> Let you me know? give you my quick Eddie Murphy story. Uh, I'm actually two quick ones. There's three parts, but I'll give you two quick ones. Back when, remember the Roxbury when you first came? Mm. And that's where all the celebrities yeah. were going to party. Mm. My, my manager back then was Norm Nixon. Debbie oh, Hall. shit, really? <laughs> yeah, so he flew me out. I'm probably about 16 years old. Uh, he takes me to Roxbury and walks Eddie Murphy. And I'm, and this is when he, back when his bodyguard was fruity. Fruity. So I'm, I'm, I'm fanning out and shit. And so I was like, excuse me, Mr. Murphy. He's the brother of Def Comedy Jam, did all the impressions and shit. I, I've seen you. <laughs> so, and, and that was it. Yeah. So, and then the second time I met him. No, I, wait, wait. You, like, how mind blowing was that? The no, just, it, it fucked my, my yeah, whole head yeah, up. Yeah, please give us that part. Here's the part that really fucked me up. So now I'm doing my first TV show called South of Sunset on CBS, mm. our action cop drama. My stunt double is his stunt double for Beverly Hills Cop 3. So he mm -hmm. says to me, hey, man, after we get off work, I got to go to, to set for Eddie. Beverly, you want to come with me? Fuck yeah, nigga. Yeah. So I go, Eddie's got a tent over the bus. And I'm sitting there, Fruity's there, Ray Murphy's there. All of a sudden, Eddie comes out, do-rag, strumming a guitar. <laughs> so he sits down, and the whole time, I'm like, this pickup ball. I'm, I'm waiting to you know, yeah, 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 impress yeah. the, the, yeah, the yeah. master. Yeah, yeah. But Eddie saw right through my shit so fast. Like, he was telling some story, and I jumped in mm. trying to be funny but make it seem like it was organic conversation. Right. And Eddie went, hey, man, you're doing the material. And if you want chill, chill. <laughs> you're jokes right now. <laughs> Nigga, I heard the Pac-Man noise. Ooh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> Nigga, I was quiet the rest of the uh, fucking night, damn. man. Yeah, yeah. he's like, yeah. don't come over here trying to trying trying to be funny. Yes, uh, yes let us yes. be funny. Yeah, just chill out, man. Relax. Yeah. How did Norm? Wait, okay, wait, we 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 speed. Yeah. So we we started with, with how did you get into it? You said Richard was your guy and everything, and then we jumped again. Yeah, the the guy who uh, and I always tell us in interviews, even though I know Stan Lathan and Russell Simmons get the credit for Def Jam, I say the brain power behind it was Bob Sumner. Okay, shout out to Bob. Bob. Shout, shout out to Bob. Bob yeah. He got all of us. Yeah. It was his thing. So uh, at one point, you know, Bob kind of knew everybody. And uh, so I eventually met Russell Simmons. And I was at a point in my career where it was like I had to choose between three managers. Russell Simmons, the chick who was on Give Me a Break. She was the youngest daughter from Give Me a Break. Her mother. Oh, Kim Fields' mom. Kim, not Kim Fields' mom. A white chick. One of the white daughters from the TV okay. show Give Me a Break. Okay. Oh. Her mother was a manager out of Pennsylvania. Okay. So she was kind of managing me a little bit, but we ain't really had no contract. And then... This was in New York? In New York. Okay. And then uh, Norm had heard of me through uh, his partner then, whose name escapes me. But Norm had heard of me, saw some material, and was like, hey, man, I want to fly you out to L.A. to possibly manage you. Now... Remember, I'm 17, first mm -hmm. time in L.A., L.A. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I go to Norm's crib, hang out. He's best friends with Denzel. Denzel comes over. I see Denzel for the first wow, time. Wow, wow. Debbie's the showrunner on A Different World. Mm -hmm. So I go by the set of A Different World hangout. But what really kicked shit off was uh, D.L. Hewley was doing warm-up for Fresh Prince. Oh, wow. So I went to uh, the studio. And DL was like, hey, man, you want to get on the mic? Do a little bit of time? I was like, fuck yeah. I crushed this motherfucker so ridiculously. Will Smith, the whole cast was all watching. Will was just standing there like, <laughs> dying laughing. So word got around town. Yo, there's this hot new kid in town. It's a beast. So for five straight years, I was in development deals. ABC, wow. CBS, NBC, Fox. So I had made probably over a million dollars before I had produced anything. Wow. So my shit... Like, just took off really fast, but then, like Hollywood is, right? Uh, shit went like this just as quick until I eventually got on uh, Mad TV. Man, so Mad you did uh, what was it? The first one, South of what? South, South of Sunset. South of it was Sunset. A, uh, for CBS. Okay. It was an hour action cop drama. And the funny wow. thing was, it was uh, me, uh, Glenn Fry from the Eagles, God rest his soul. Yeah, yeah. He was the lead, and a white chick named uh, Maria Patillo. It's kind of like a mod squad. Okay. Now, the issue was Glenn Fry couldn't act for shit. It was <laughs> terrible. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they passed up some top notch actors. But he was Glenn Fry, Glenn so Fry. yeah. Mm -hmm. So by the time we got to like episode 22, he had hired an acting coach. So for the later episodes, his acting got a little tighter. So he got into it with the head of CBS and was like, yo, I want to reshoot everything. Now I got <laughs> all 22. All 20. Wow. I got this acting coach and I don't want to embarrass myself. So when the, you know, the head of the network was like, no, that's too much money. <laughs> so they got into a, a thing which kind of already put us on a bad note. Right. And here's the second thing. We were up against the number one show at that time, Home Improvement. Uh, Home Improvement. And uh, Tim, Tim Allen, right? And Melrose wow. Place. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Damn. And the California fires happened. So we didn't even Damn. air in California. But between Melrose Place and Home Improvement and Glenn's issue with the network, and they canceled us after the first episode. Dang. Oh, Dang. shit. Y'all had Dang. 22 in the can. We had 22 in the can. Yikes. And was canceled after the first episode. Now, we spoke, we spoke about this before on, a, on previous episodes. Isn't it crazy how things that happen in your career that nobody ever knows, like how close you were to something? Right. Yeah. Right. Like, I was in the movie Hitch. I had three yeah. scenes in the movie Hitch with bitch-ass Will, back and forth, like... You know what I'm saying? It's so crazy when you say that. Why is he doing that? Like, oh, oh. Look, three scenes, mano y mano. Got to the premiere and he goes, oh shit, I forgot to tell you they cut your scenes. But nobody, the world doesn't know that. So it's like, hey man, I was close. Told everybody. I was close. I had my boys with me. Flew, right. flew my news out from Brooklyn. We all, right, right. And even when he told me, I went and sat back down and let them watch the whole movie because I didn't want to spoil it for them. Yeah. I didn't want them to watch the whole movie like, yo, what the fuck? So I was like, let them watch it thinking I'm going to pop up at some point. Right. And when it ended, they were like, yo, what happened? I said, yo, when I went over there, he told me they cut my scenes. But I, I wanted y'all to enjoy the movie. People have no idea. They, like something like that. You, right. people, I, yeah. I would have never have known that. But yeah. 22 in the can, yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had I had that was several times. Like the deal was right there. Right. I have gotten pilots before. One time I got a pilot. Call me. You got it. Paperwork signed. You know, you got did your deal before you go in. Yeah. Did all of that. You got it. Before we shoot, four days we change in the character. First thing I thought they're gonna make the character gay. Like now we changing the character. It's a white guy now. Mm. So I'm like I can be anything else. I could be. They want him funnier, less funny, dramatic, whatever. I could do all that. Can't be white. Right. Right. I'm out. The people nobody ever knows like how, how close you are a lot of times so how was you moving during that time you got damn near a million dollars in development deals you out here did you come out here do you by myself okay by yourself so oh, wow. your mom wasn't with you at this point in by time myself. so is you so where are you staying do you know at debbie's house oh okay yeah okay, no where was uh, that like north hollywood santa monica okay santa, santa monica. monica they had a nice crib on the beach near the beach nice so, yeah. wow wow yeah man and then you know because of debbie again the showrunner for Different world. I, you know, I did a couple episodes of Different World. One with En Vogue, uh, mm -hmm. no, actually two with En Vogue. Mm -hmm. uh, but then what ultimately happened was, by the time I got to my last deal at Fox, Mad TV was in its third season. But I auditioned through before they even hit first season, and they wanted me then. But I was locked into a deal with Aaron Spelling to do a show uh -huh. called Cross Town Traffic, which was again was kind of a mod squad. Mm -hmm. So by the time that deal ended, the, the uh, president of the network at that time, Peter Chernin, said, look, man, I'm a fan of yours, and I don't want to let you go. So you auditioned for Mad. They wanted you then. I don't see why they wouldn't want you now. I'm going to have them put you on. So then I was on Mad TV. For so you didn't have years. to audition that nice. time. No, no. But you already did, though. Right. The first time. Yeah, Before that they, was the, yeah, the, that the was. same audition. But they could have said, hey, well, that's just three, two years ago. Yeah. Right. You know, do it again. But they was like, nah, we, we'll, let's, we'll rock. Right, right, right. All right, wait, wait. We're going to stop right there. I want to go back again. Yeah. Apollo. Yes. Yeah. You destroyed the Apollo. Here's what's funny about this. Right? Yes. I knew there was a story there. Here's what's funny about me, this. Well, you were like 15, and, and you know, 14, 15? Uh, 17. 17, okay. But, and here's what's funny about this. And, and, and this is one of the raps on me, right? Especially when I was young. We're leading up was, to that. No, we're leading up was, to that. We're leading up to that. Go. Aries is cocky. He's arrogant. And I'm going to tell you why. When I say, I, nigga, to this day, I'm a beast on that fucking stage. My crowd work is Mike Vick like it, scrambling out the pocket. Yeah. So, mm. you know, my whole thing was I wanted to murder every time. So I go, they introduced me on the Apollo. In the first minute and a half, there's a mic issue. So, again, I'm, I'm 17. It's been doing comedy three years. So they was like, yo, we got to reintroduce you. You got to come out. Now, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm saying I had the presence of mind to go, don't come back out here and do the same joke. Nice. Because you know these niggas, this is the problem. Nice, yes. Yeah. So you got to right. hit them in the mouth again with something new. So I came out. I crushed it. And I remember I went up to the balcony because it was two bad bitches there that I was trying to fuck. And, and a little bit to what you said, 
Dude, during the 90s, that run for Mad TV, the whole 90s, yeah. mm -hmm. nigga, I had money. I was funny as fuck. Slim, trim, sexy. I really thought how to pussy, nigga. Yeah, I was an animal in the 90s, nigga. <laughs> so I'm trying to find a way to get my swagger back. But, you know, I've been doing this. My birthday is tomorrow. So I'll be oh, shit. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, I my dad's gonna... birthday is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm an Aries. Eddie's Eddie's birthday. birthday is yes. tomorrow. Oh, Kareem, shit. that dude, Jabbar. My two of the best friends yeah. tomorrow. April 3rd. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought, yeah, I thought, that's what's up, man. I thought Kareem was like April 16th or something like that. I think it is okay. April third, though. Okay, My okay. Bad. No, no, it's, it, it might be April sixteenth. Marlon Brando is April. 3rd. Okay, okay. But but anyway, um, yeah, man, I will have been doing this shit now for thirty four years, and 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 mm -hmm. I and I haven't been on a TV show in over twenty, and I don't have a movie career, and haven't been in a prominent movie since Jerry Maguire in nineteen ninety nine, and I'm still on the road. I'm still selling out uh, uh, clubs. I'm I'm moving into theaters now. So again, I'm not trying to be braggadocious. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to say that when I say that this shit runs in my veins and I'm a student of the game and I go hard in the paint, it's, it's all I got. So, you know, mm -hmm. I don't fuck around when it comes to this shit, man. Dude, I, I treat it the same way. I right. treat it like, yeah, other things can come from it, but we're going to focus on this thing and let the other stuff just and I happen. See, and, I, and I'm telling you, I saw that in you. So that's why I'm going... Me and this nigga probably don't speak because we both New Yorkers. <laughs> killers on stage. It's like, nigga, who you? Nigga, who you? Yeah, so, yeah. So that's why I'm saying, yeah. like, the fact that we're doing this is like, whew. <laughs> My man, no. So, I, bro, I'm telling you, I remember it being in the house watching Apollo, like, yo, this dude, you did the robot. Yeah, which Will E stole from me. Willie Robo, Willie stole Willie you? Robo, the Robo DJ. Yeah, that's you know, you know, you know, and I did. I, 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 ta I, I, I talked it. about this on Vlad. I said, "This how you know this nigga was not a real comic. That was his only card. He was a one trick pony. Nigga, if you dope, you got a bunch of tricks. Yeah, you got a bunch of quotables. Nigga, if your only thing is one joke, mm. then nigga, if you nice, do something else. Right. You know what's funny when you talk about Willie Robo? I'm from Jersey. Yeah, I lived in but. Jersey, North Brunswick. Yeah, I'm I'm from Edison, so I'm right. Yeah, down yeah, the yeah. But um, I started comedy really when I moved to D.C. to the D.M.V. So I honed my comedic skills in the D.M.V. So I'm really considered a D.M.V. comedian mm -hmm. based off of that, right? And Willie Robo was the nigga you did not want to go behind. I remember. <laughs> Willie <laughs> Robo was the nigga you did not want to go behind. Right. So I knew I that I had got to a different level of funny. When I went behind Willie Robo and had a good set, and he came to me, it was like, "Young blood, you, you pretty good, you pretty good." Right. But just to hear that, but you, you, when you say you couldn't go behind him, was it because of that joke? And he, yeah, yeah, the nigga was, yeah, dude, just what he, yeah. Yeah, just what he did to the room. Yeah, it's just what he did to the room and how dude, that used to be my closer when I would do RoboCop fucking, and that was my closer. Wow, wow. Oh, and I used the Yamaha SPX90 sound machine. Oh, wow, yeah. Wow. Come on, B. Yeah, see, I never Come knew on, that. Man. That's dope. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. I, I, let me let me say something. This is the part I want. I've been itching to get to. Um, and I said this to Andy. I was like, I want to tell Chris when I do his podcast. I mean, uh, Tony when I do his podcast. And I just hope he don't get offended. No, no, no. And I was going to say, listen, your brother is one of the greatest comedians ever. He's, he's generational. Yes. He's a genius. Yes. We know this. But with all due respect, I think you are way funnier than him. <clears throat> I think you are way funnier than him. Listen, I, and, and before you answer, I'm sorry. Okay, no, go ahead, go ahead. This is part of the other rap on me. Thank you. A lot of people like to call me a hater. Aries is bitter. He's a hater because I have a fucking opinion. Right. You know, I'm very opinionated, and I'm not gonna go with the flow just because that's what everybody else is doing. Yeah. I'm not gonna forcefully not gonna go with it right. just to be that guy. But if some, if I feel something a certain way, I call it how I feel it and see it. And so, you know, I always said this about Chris. I get his genius. It, when, I love black people. I hate niggas. When I'm at the ATM, I ain't looking for zooms. I'm, I'm looking, looking for, for niggas. niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's genius. But as far as touching my funny bone, making me kill over, wipe my, my, my tear ducts, Chris don't do it for me like that. And, and that's not to say he's right. not brilliant. Right. No, I, I, bro, I get it. No, it's no like styles second. make fights. Right. The same right. way you, you look at a Mike Tyson fight, you might see Sugar Shane Mosey or De La Hoya sitting ringside. I respect the game. Yeah. So I respect Chris's who he is. But as far as what tickles me, 
Yo, you got him, yo. Son, that's funny you said Styles makes fights because I was at I was at Crawford Spence, right? And Roy Jones was like five seats over, right? And they're going, you know, they're going hard. They're not yeah. trying to kill each other. And I'm like, yo, Roy Jones is right there, yo. Like, right. like that's Roy Jones. I'm, yeah, they doing, but they, but that's Roy Jones. Right. Yeah. So I understand that that dynamic. Yeah. Uh, I say this all the time, people, and I've heard that before. People go, hey man, I like you over your brother. My running joke, you know, I, I, the running joke when people say like, who's funny? Are you your brother? I go, hey, we just let y'all guys decide that. We count the money. Yeah. You know, that's my running joke. So there's no, I won't mm. say anything crazy that being in the tabloids the next day or, or, or trending. But I think it's just styles make fights. And my style is more casual. Right. I call my show a conversation with Tony Rock because I talk to the audience just like I used to talk to my friends sitting on the stoop in bed mm -hmm. Brooklyn right. when they would be like, yo, just let's go sit in Tone's yard because he's going to be funny as shit all day. And I would just sit on the stoop and like somebody walked past, look, this nigga, you big, your shoes look like you <laughs> big fucking. My brother was more. Mm. I got to make it, create it. I right. was just like, I see it, I speak on it, let's go. You know what I'm saying? So whereas you said, I'm a beast on this motherfucker, right. and uh, my crowd work is Michael Vick in the pocket, I feel the exact same way. Right. Yeah. We were on the road this weekend. Black dude in the room <laughs> with a white girl, and they both got on bunny ears Easter Sunday. Oh, wow. Damn oh, shit. And everybody's running to the green room like, Tone, it's this dude in the room. Now, we never <laughs> we never tell you you got to get somebody, but man, you got to see. It. And I'm like, all right, if he's there, and yeah. he, I see him, I'll get him. But like, I don't like to do it. I got to do it organically. Right, right, right. Yeah. So there's a girl to my right, and she's like, her voice is like, I just, I love you so much. So I make fun of her. And the dude she's with, I start making fun of him. And I'm like, hey. And everybody's like, yo, chill, chill. I'm like, hey, bro, it could be worse. It could be worse. Right. You could be a black dude sitting here with a white bitch with bunny ears on. Like, and the room <laughs> explodes because they were all waiting for me to get to him, yeah, right? Right. So I go, bro, so what's going on? Is your girlfriend? He's like, yeah, yeah, we be together. I go, so this wasn't your idea. Nah, she kind of made me do this. I said, she made you put the bunny ears on? I said, well, nigga, I would hate to see what she make you wear on Juneteenth. Oh, <laughs> and man. the room fucking Lost it. went right. to the second floor, yeah, the yeah. third floor. And I yeah. took the mic, you know, I got the cord. I took the cord and put it around my wrist. Like I was like this. Chain. And I was like... <laughs> I said, that's him on Juneteenth. Yeah, how you doing, everybody? Yo, <laughs> yeah. I saw people like, yo, what the f grown the men, ever? like, oh, yo, man. people I, knocking their food. So, bro, I totally understand. Yeah. Like, when I'm in that zone, yeah. When I'm in that zone, I say I say this to them all the time. We have to be humble with the people because they don't yeah. know. Right. When you're outside and you're selling merch and you're yeah. shaking hands and taking pictures, yeah. yes, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so. But in the green room, they will tell you. I'm the cockiest motherfucker in the world. <laughs> say dude, in I the green room, I walk up stage and go, man, I'm the best ever, nigga. Let me tell you, dude, I walk around the club with my earphones in, listening to music, and people either come up and go, hey, can I get a picture, autograph? I go, after the show. And a lot of people act like after the show meant no. Right. Yeah. So they already uh, a little turned off. Right. And then, you know, I got my Ice Cube scowl on, yeah. and it's just, it's game time. Right. But but once after the show is over, I, I will hug the fattest bitch and give her a kiss. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and act like it's all love, because yeah. it is. They but, don't realize we got to lock in. Like, oh, the, we, man. We, we, yeah. When oh. comics are saying, no, not right now, and I'll take it afterwards, or after the show, or come to the green room, we, we have to get locked in because if we right. give you guys a bad performance, that's all you're going to talk about. You're not going to talk about you didn't get the picture. You're going to talk about, I sat there the whole hour and he wasn't funny. So let him lock in. Let us lock in sometimes. It's not about you. Now, something I have to ask you. This is something else that's been getting me. Because like when you said certain things that you didn't know, like I didn't know that. Right. This is something that I've always wanted to know that's baffled the shit out of me. And both you and Eddie Murphy, I go... We know as black men how hard it is for us to make it in this hustle. Right. It's hard for white boys to make it. Right. Because of the competitive nature of the beast. Right. But for us, it's even harder. Right. So I go, how is it that Eddie Murphy is your brother? And I don't see you in no Eddie Murphy vehicles, Charlie. How is it that Chris Rock is your brother? And I don't see you in no Chris Rock shit. And now, before you answer, here's the one that fucked me up the most. The movie that... Chris and Martin was in where they played brothers. So oh, definitely that, that, that fucked me up. I'm going, not in a million fucking years do Chris Rock and Mar Martin have the same facial features. Yes. Tony is his brother yeah. and look like him. How is Tony not in the fucking movie playing his brother? I'll give you another one. They did the longest yard <laughs> in Arizona. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Him and him and Sandler. Yeah. Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz, my man forever. Joey Diaz is my man forever. Joey Diaz said day one on the set, he walked on the set, saw all the people in the prison. My brother came on set ready to shoot. He said, hey, hold the fuck up. Where's Tony? 
Where the fuck is Tony? So you mean Tony doesn't fit in this fucking movie? I said, Joey Diaz, you my man forever. Yeah. You my man forever, Joey Diaz. Explain to, that to, to me. To try to explain. To try. I can't. And, and, if, and if you're in the movie, listen, the money stays in the family. Listen. Literally. I agree. I agree. I'm going to try to explain to you guys and you. And I'm not making it. I'm not saying this is going to make sense. But my brother sometimes, and you can see it in what he does and his movements and his actions and stuff like that, like Martin in the movie. He's a businessman when it comes to his his movies and TV right. stuff. You know what I'm saying? So Martin's bigger than me. I need to sell this movie. Tone's my brother. Yes, there, there will be some, you know, hey, him and his brother in the movie. Let's go check it out. But him and Martin push the needle more. Hmm. I'm only speaking on that movie in that, in that regard. I, I get it. I was like, okay, I get it. The one that fucked me up. Here's the one that fucked me up. And I've never told anybody this. Only a few of my, like two of my boys know this and maybe, you know, my, my siblings. When he did the movie Top Five, oh, yeah. <clears throat> I was on tour. <clears throat> I came home like for a week. I was at the Comedy Cellar. We hadn't seen each other in a while. And we don't talk, we don't talk a lot. We, now since the divorce, we, we talk a lot more. But he was in his, his space where we, we weren't really talking a lot. And I walk in the comedy cellar, and he's there, and I'm, he's at the table with, you know, Colin and all of the guys. And I'll go over to say what's up, and he goes, hey, got a movie, man. Put you in it. I did not ask for anything. Mm -hmm. Chris will tell you, I've never, I, like I said before, I, we, it's on the uh, headliners only. I've asked him for five favors my whole life. He said no every time, and I swore on everything I loved, I would never ask him for anything as long as I lived. So that night, I walk in the comedy cellar. He goes, yo, I got a movie. I'm putting you in it. Now I got to do my due diligence. Okay, who do I have to call? Do I have to audition? Do I have to send a tape? No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Mm -hmm. uh, we're shooting in New York, too. I'm like, bet. Summertime in New York. I'm going to be in New York for the summer. I'm going to be home shooting a movie with my brother for the summer. I'm beyond excited. It don't get no better than this. I'm thinking, it's another, this is another one of those things where people never know how close you are. Right. So it's New York. <clears throat> Everybody that's a, that's a stand-in, I know. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's background, I know. No, everybody. So I'm on tour, waiting for the phone call. Tell my management, tell my agency, yo, once he calls, we're going to pause the tour and go shoot the movie. Yeah, bet. We ready. And I start getting phone calls like, hey, I'm on set. Where you at? I'm like, what do you mean you're on set? We, we started shooting today. Today was the first day. Oh, shit. Well, I, yeah. I didn't get a phone call. A week later, some chick. Hey, babe, where you at? I'm, I'm doing background on this club scene. Are you here? What are you talking about? Yeah, we, we shooting. We, the top five is, is up and running. Like a month in. Nigga, two months in. I get a fucking phone call. Yo, you at the rap party? We here. Oh, damn. damn. Yo, bro, that shit crushed me. That shit crushed me, bro. So why didn't you Look, call? Look, I've never seen the movie Top 5. I, I shouldn't have to call. Yeah. You said to your brother, I'm going to put you in a movie. I feel yeah. it. I should just get a phone call. Like, yo, tomorrow we'll be here at 2 o'clock. We shoot. Yeah. Or, yo, give me an email. I'm going to send you the sides. You had to be angry. Bro, it devastated me. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Now that sets the that set the stage for the Barclays when him and Kev did the Barclays. You saw the headliners yeah, only. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm in the green room the whole time like this. And I said, Tone, you got to say something. Uh -huh. Now, backstory: the, where the Barclays sits used to be the hub for the New York Daily News. That's where the New York Daily News print, print, printing plant was. My father worked there our whole childhood. We worked there. My first job, my first job, Chris's first job, Andre's first job, Brian's first job, Daily News. So now it's the Barclays. So Kevin and Chrissy are doing five dates in New York. They're doing Jersey mm -hmm. twice. They're doing Long Island. They do the Garden and they do Barclays. I don't give a fuck about none of those except the Barclays. So I'm there the first night in the green room and it's everybody. It's Kev and his whole contingent and my brother and all his people and his network people and, and I'm just up against the wall and they're talking about, yo, Dave's going to do Friday at the Garden and Saturday we're going to do this. And I'm just like, fuck all of that shit. I want that Barclays. <laughs> I want that Barclays. Right. And I'm on the wall. And I say to myself, I know you said you wasn't going to ask him for anything. I know that top five fucked you up. Mm -hmm. But if you don't speak up right now, you're going to regret this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. You're going to tell your son when he's 30 years old, like, yeah, you know, I should have said something that day. So I came up off that wall and was like, yo, what's up with the Barclays? And everybody just stopped and looked. And Kev was the first one to speak. Kev was like, hey, man, if it's cool with Chris, it's cool with me. And then we, everybody looks at Chris, and he's like, well, we'll figure it out. 
And I know that's him like wanting to say no, but not wanting to say no in front of everybody. Yeah, everybody, everybody. So I go, all right, I go, I turn to everybody, I go, y'all heard what he said, right? Y'all heard what he said, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I know, bro, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't, I don't I know. understand how this is possible. So look, I go, hey, y'all heard him, right? We'll figure it out, right? We'll figure it out. That's all I want. So I, at least I put it out there. I'm leaving, I'm leaving the uh, Newark Symphony Hall, like at least I put it out there. Oh no, NJ Pack. I'm leaving, like at least I put it out there. Let's see what happens. So now I go to the show at the garden and Dave, Kevin, Chrissy kill. I go to Long Island. They fucking blow the place up. And Monday was the Barclays. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Monday was the Barclays. And uh, I'm leaving, jumping in the Uber, heading to the Barclays. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there stupid early, like, you know. And I get to the foot of the Manhattan Bridge, about to come over the bridge into, the, into Brooklyn. And he texts me, yo, you on the show tonight? And that was it. All right, so and when I get there, everybody there, his, his security, his people, like, oh, this is going to be so dope. This, so every, all of his people, I'm like, listen. Every one of this, Matt, Matt Claybrooks is there. I'm like, Matt, I don't know what you said. I don't know what you did, but I know something you did played a part in me getting this opportunity tonight. So I want to thank you. I go to his security, Big Tony. Yo, I don't know what you did, bro. I don't know what you said, but I know you had to have said something for this to happen. So thank you. I go to his wardrobe, everybody. Yo, I don't know what y'all did because this motherfucker was not going to give me this, this, this but, look. But, but what's, what's blowing me away is you're talking about this. As, As if he's a stranger. I know. This I is know. your brother. I know. He, he knows how funny you are. He knows you want to grind. He knows you trying to get to his status, keep the money in the fam. What reason would you have to not say yes? I think some, I feel like sometimes, I said this in, in an interview uh, last week. I feel like sometimes, I feel, I don't, it's never been corroborated, but I feel like sometimes he would rather I wasn't in the business. What? I, I feel like that sometimes. Like no, that sounds strange to hear. <laughs> well, what? Yeah. Well, it's, to, it, it's yeah. to the point where you know I don't I don't know because <clears throat> I only had one sibling, and I know how close we were. So I know it's probably too hard when it's so many siblings as well. Maybe it's kind of hard for, hmm. for certain things, but at certain at some point. You gotta call mommy. Look, and that <laughs> you gotta call mommy. And so when I say the top five, hey, I shouldn't have to call mommy. Chrissy Tell on some this. bullshit, yeah. mom. He said he was gonna put me in a movie, and 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 and, and this is what I'm asking, like, cause I cause I don't know, cause I didn't experience. Me and my sister, rest rest in peace. You oh, know, no. if you're gonna ask if there was ever any issues with us, no, there was never any issues. Right. When we were younger, I used to get in fights for him. If so, yeah. He's big bro, and I was the cat. They took his bike. I'd go get that shit back. Yeah. I pull up like, yo, y'all niggas got to see me. Like, I was that dude. Like, yo. Yeah. Oh, shit. Like yo, to, yo, Tone, Tone, you chill. Tone, you good. Yo, we cool with you, Tone. We ain't got no problem. All right, well, if you got a problem with me, then you can't have yeah. a problem with my man or my brother or my sister. Nobody. Yeah. You can't, if we cool, then we, you got to be cool with everybody. It's weird because one, one of my close friends, too, is, um, uh, name is Angelo Owens. It's, uh, he, Queen Latifah is his oldest, you know, is his sister, oldest sister. You know what I mean? And, you know. And they're close, but some some sometimes I'd be like, yo, like, why, like, what, what's going on? Like, why are you, why are you out here having to hustle as hard and struggle a little bit, whatever? And then once I really start to get to know him, this is not in your case, right. he, you know, Angelo be kind of, he, uh, he be kind of janky, you know. He does, he he's like our the home improvement guy. He can fix and do anything, so that's yeah. what he does. You know what I mean? He got a lot of celebrity clientele, but she bought him a truck and he wrecked it. And oh, he did see, yeah, certain okay, things yeah. and he made whatever. So Latifa like, Ed's, Ed's like, yo, you my you my younger brother. I'm you know, I'll do certain things, but nigga, uh. And he was like, yo, she do more things for the sisters than she do for me. Mm -hmm. uh. And so sometimes I'm wondering, like, damn, like, I don't know how it is to well, have you know a, what? a sibling. No, there's there is some truth to that. There is some truth. Like when I was younger, <clears throat> I was I was I wouldn't say I was a fuck up, but I got in a lot of trouble when I was younger. When I was a kid, it was like so I guess when he was, so he, my brother started when he was 18, 19, right? right? So I'm considerably younger at that mm -hmm. point yeah. and I'm still getting in trouble. So at that point, it's like, I'm trying to do this thing. Yeah. Tone gonna fuck it up. <laughs> yeah. Then he gets a little older, gets a little more established. Tone's still wilding out. Yeah. I don't know, man. Tone might yeah. be, do the wrong thing, say the wrong thing to the wrong person. Some, you know, but now I, I, I really feel like this. This is how I feel as I'm sitting here right now. I feel like I'm 25 in, 26 in. I feel like at this point, bro, this ain't a gimmick. Like, I'm not trying to do it just because 
I've seen it work out for you. This is what it is. This is I'm a lifer, bro. Yeah. And that's why I've worked so hard. That's why I did I did the bringer shows. That's why I did the the barking for the for the for the audience. And you know how we used to do mm. in Harlem, you bark for the audience. I did all that because I never wanted to lose credibility with my peers. And I think at this point you would think he would say, "All right, no, this motherfucker really does this." Yeah. Like I book, I got a, I got a TV show, I got a sitcom. He never even booked a sitcom. I did shit in the business he never did. Mm. So I thought at some point it would be, okay, he really solidified. Like, but you know, it's but, not, it's not, not that you ever wanna. And that's why I go so hard. Sorry to cut you off. That's why I go so hard for my little brother Jordan. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Jordan's in everything I'm doing. But, and, or, but, but I'm sorry, but, but I feel like that's how it should be like like one of the things i i, I like about the wayans is and, and and if i was one of the wayans not that i would want to slack off or be lazy but to know you have a parachute and three other brothers where right. you go nigga if i don't make it or if i decide <laughs> not to do nothing but yeah. sit on my ass yeah, yeah. i got three other niggas wealthy yeah. as fuck right but i'd be all right. right i ain't sleeping in a cardboard box yeah. yeah just to know that you have that parachute right one thing about the wayans and though, and they 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 don't play as far as they like, yo, you got to go to school for this. You better get yeah, to yeah. film school. They make, you earn it. they make you, they really they make, make you earn it. it. They don't give it to you. You got. You that's know, what you I did with Jordan. When Jordan came to LA and was like, I want to do an hour special. Jordan was like a year in, like, I want to do an hour special. Kid, slow. hold up. First of all, pump your fucking brakes, all right? You, you're wilding out. <laughs> it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And in the beginning, I would do nothing for Jordan. Right. I, would do, I wouldn't call a club. I wouldn't talk. If he, hey, this guy's giving me a hard time getting up. Well, then you're just going to have a hard time getting up, bro. Like, I'm not doing it. Then once he put the work in, after yeah. I would see he was consistent with it. See. I'm like, and then I would see him write any, writing, and he would write a new bit that I thought was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And then he had a 10-minute set that I thought was hilarious. And it was like, okay, this I, I'm, I'm going to fuck with this guy. Like, I could really work with him. But don't also, 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 let's not gloss over the fact, I am the cockiest motherfucker in the world. So I feel like it's some, so there's a part of it, it's like a part of this is like, I don't need that motherfucker. But if you could, if you could back that up, you know what I'm saying? Like, like when he, when he made the point about Latifa and her brother. Right. My thing is this: that that is different from you because that's a whole nother. He's on some other journey. Right. But when you got somebody who is equally as talented you, talented as you, or who some might even argue more, then it's like okay, there's a respect that mm -hmm. I think should be there. Where again, if y'all join forces and y'all family, it yeah. only makes everything better. And I want to say this real quick: hmm. God rest his soul, Charlie Murphy. But the vibe I always got from Charlie, and even the stories I heard, Charlie was a roughneck. Charlie was a yeah. hardcore nigga. Yeah, yeah. Where Eddie seems more yeah. approachable, and yeah. and yeah. I always said a joke. I would, you know, Eddie and Charlie look like between them two, one of them would help you in a crisis, and the other one looks like the crisis. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's yeah. so. So talent wise, I never got the feeling that Charlie was as as Eddie. Right. Where yeah. with you and Chris, I go. Yo, man, Tony, yeah. Tony but you know what? Chris. Now, listen, and my brother said in the interview one time, he said, and it's very similar to what you just said. He said in the interview one time, listen, man, sometimes it depends on the person. You just got to know what's going on. Like my brother, Brian, my brother, Brian has never bothered a soul. He doesn't bother anybody. He's the nicest guy on the planet. If anything ever happens to Brian and somebody calls me and says, Brian's in, the cr in trouble on a crisis, I drop everything and run because I know Brian didn't do it. He did nothing to predicate this. If somebody calls me and says Tone's in a situation, I got to go, hold up. <laughs> what the fuck did he do? What did they do? What did he? He's like, I got I to gotta yeah. figure out stuff. Yeah. So I get it. I get it. I get it. But listen, I've been in this business, like I said, 25. I started in 98, so that's 25, 26, right? Mm -hmm. God ain't let me down yet. I know. I know. I'm not hoping. I'm not wishing. I know that that phone call's coming one day that's like, yo, we going on tour together. Or we doing this movie together, and that's gonna blow the roof off of this whole fucking game. Mm. I know it's coming. Yeah. But don't you think, on some level, Chris just wants you? He, he's aware of. He has, of he's very aware. He's very, I'm, very I'm being aware. aware is not. That's not. But the fact that okay, let's say I'm not, I'm not, I won't use top five for an example, but Barclays was an example of you know what the magnitude of why you wanted to do it. He understood that, and it's yeah. like that's cool but anything else that involves the the machine maybe he just wants you to be perceived as undeniable and he was not your gatekeeper in any way so right I, I get that i get that but like i said i'm 26 in now Still. there's no there's no like oh he got it because uh and again i've done things he didn't even do yeah. so there's no he got it because I don't, right, right, right. That's dummies are gonna say that forever. Dummies are gonna say that yeah, forever because yeah, we're true. gonna be linked forever because we are blood brothers. So dummies are gonna always say he got 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, he did that because bro- that's the dummies. I'm talking right. about people that understand and know how it works and you know understand the, 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 the dedication it takes to even be considered good. But, good, just good. Just basically like a 65 yeah. on the test is good, right? People, how hard it is to just be good. And I'm better than good. I, I want to go back for a second. Oh, yeah. And hey, we got to get back to you, motherfucker. But I, 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 I don't about me. But no, uh, I, 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 no, no, but you got to say something. your podcast, too. I, this blows my mind because I've always wanted to know this. Yes, yes. <laughs> but but <laughs> my last thing is this, going back to the movie where Martin played Chris's brother. You know, I hate when, when and I get it, show business. What's the no? What's the, other cat, what's the other cat that was in the movie? Uh, Kevin was in the movie. No, no. What's your boy? Danny Glover. That, 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 that does comedy now? Tracy Morgan. Uh, Jermaine Fowler. No, no, no. Jamie, uh, uh, Tracy Morgan was in the movie. The, that, that's at a funeral. Uh, no, the cat that was that wants to do stand up now. He was. Uh, oh, uh, uh, I was going to say Corbin Burnson. <laughs> Carlton, something. Uh, uh, what's his name? I don't do the best. He was in the movie. He, the dude that used to. Uh, he got fired from the TV show. Uh, uh, he got fired from a white. No, black dude got fired from the sh- scandal. Oh, Columbus, oh uh, Short. Columbus Short. Columbus Short. Yeah, Columbus Short was in the movie. I thought that role should have been me. I, I, oh, yeah. I was. I watched the whole movie. Like, yo, you mean to tell me <laughs> I couldn't? Okay. But I listen. This is the thing. You know this. You know this. You know this. Tech support. Y'all know this. <laughs> If you dwell on coulda, shoulda, woulda in this business, bro, oh, you, you will drive yourself fucking crazy. Same. I go on auditions. I walk out the room. I don't think about that shit at all for the rest of the day. Stuff happens, bro. You got to get that shit away from you immediately. Because if you go to sleep with that shit on your head, you're going to, um, I would have the cul-de-sac head right now. I would have fucking blotches. I would be fat and I would be, you know what I'm saying? My skin would be bad. Bro, God ain't let me down yet. You can't dwell on that shit. The next day got to be a, ne- the, the, a new day. You can't drink, bring no bullshit from yesterday into the new day. <laughs> that's like, that's like, nigga, fuck out of here with all that bullshit. No, 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 no. So no, no, that's that, 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 was such, no. That was such a profound. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you got to understand. This has been. That was, that mm, was yeah. fucking 200 pages. Of that. Dude, listen, this, <laughs> this has been a struggle around. for me <laughs> for so long. That's Everything why- you're saying. Dr. Dre has told me this person, that person. So I, I, I hear you. Listen, listen. I will go, bruh. This is the first time you and I have had a sit down in forever. We have never had a sit down. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. So me and my mother had a falling out years ago. And I held on to that shit. Every day of my life. Got a picture with your mother, by the way. Very sweet lady. Yes, yes. Look, woke up every day. Wasn't the, in the front of my mind. Wasn't the, right. t- the first thing I thought of. But every day it was like that bullshit was just when I would go home for holidays and I'd be around. I was like, yeah, all right. like it was like it was a strange relationship, right? My son is going to be four May second. When my son was born, my number one priority was to make sure that he had a relationship with his grandmother that I had with my grandmother, her mother. Mm-hmm. Undeniable. A, a bond that can never be broken. So I'm thinking to myself like, damn, I'm in a hotel in New York one night. I'm laying there. I told him the story. I'm laying in a hotel one night just by myself. And I'm like, yo, I start doing the numbers. I never did the math. And I'm like, yo, bro, that was 30 years ago. Damn. Damn, you've been holding on to that shit for 30 years. Bro, right now, right here, right now, that shit stops. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, all the bullshit from the past ain't coming into the new day with you. And every day beyond that is going to be the same way. You're going to wake up and whatever bullshit was in your past is not coming into your, whatever bullshit from Monday is not going to shred into your Tuesday. Because right. then you're already fucking your Tuesday up. Right. And if you do it Wednesday, you fucking your Wednesday up. You got to go in with a clean slate every day. And I was like, right here, right now, me and mommy, good. We good. Then I was like, everybody around the way, niggas I wanted to kill. Like, well, if I ever see that nigga, I'm gonna kill him. Yo, we good. People that owe me money, we good. Bitches that did me wrong, yo, we good. Cause now it's just about my baby. You know what I'm saying? And having great days with my kid. I told him this, and he was like, yo, son, you probably added years to your life yep, yep. by letting that shit go. I called my brother Brian, like, yo, I just had a revelation. I'm like, yo, I was, I took my note, my joke pad. I was like, yo, I was doing this. Like, I scribbled on the joke pad. Like, that was my Monday. Then I would. Do the shit on Tuesday. So I'm going into every day fucked up. I said, now I'm going in clean slate, clean slate, clean slate. And that's how you got to do. That's how you got to move. I know Dr. Dre told you that. Whoever else told you that. But bro, tomorrow when you wake up, whatever bullshit, because you're still here. Yeah. You're still here. You got, a new, you got another day for a reason. 
The Most High decided to give you another day for a reason. For you to go into that day with a clean slate. Whoever did some fuck shit, they know they did fuck shit. Owe you money, whatever, lied about you. They know. That's they crossed the bed. Like, you got to go in clean slate. So that's what that's how I move now. Wow. All right. I hear you. <laughs> he, he, he looking like nah. It's, a, it's some niggas that I ain't getting what, no what, pass to. What 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 made them want to tell you that? What was the re, what was the thing about you were going? What were you, you know, going we, through at the we, time? You know, we, whenever we have open conversations, just about the business, about life, you know. Has the business sat with you? Like a, I'm like a molested child, man. Like yeah. Yeah. What was the lies, the, just, the false? Yeah, just the bullshit, the politics, the racism. Yeah. You know, any, I used to tell people, anytime I go on an audition, please don't tell me you love me. Don't tell me, oh my God, we love you. That's the right. kiss of death. Right. That's when I right. know wow. I'm not going to get it. You know, <laughs> don't tell me you love me. You know, and, and it just, you know, like, like again, I, I almost feel stupid saying what I'm going to say because you just gave this very enlightening Azelia Azella whatever that like, <laughs> name is. Yeah. Uh, Azelia Azella <laughs> yeah it's, it's some profound shit but I'm, I'm just sitting there going you know when you go the business you know it's it show business I hate when they try to make it seem like the business is bigger than the show I think they're just as equally as important absolutely so yeah. when they absolutely. go so I when, agree when your brother goes I need to move this movie along so I need Martin instead of Tony. Do you understand what, what I'm saying? I, completely. Okay. But okay. I think what gets not said enough or thrown under the rug is don't underestimate the intelligence of the audience. If you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. Yes, I hear Martin's got the name value, but if the product ain't good, who gives a shit? Right. And it's not going to do what it's supposed to do. Now you put Tony and Chris together and they got that natural chemistry as brothers. And comedically, what you might be able to do, y'all both going back and forth, you might create something that's 10 times funnier yep. than Martin and Chris. And let the audience decide, yo, Tony and Chris together smash that shit. Yeah. Yeah. And you could still get the results you may have gotten with a Martin and a Chris. And my question- I agree, I agree. And my question becomes this, how did that movie do? Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. So you go in Martin like it's a guarantee. And no disrespect to Martin. Right. Martin's the shit. I'm not dissing Martin or saying nothing crazy. I'm just going, Hollywood puts its eggs in that basket like it's a guarantee. There's no guarantees in anything. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger made a $200 million movie called The Last Action Hero. It was unprecedented of a budget for that time. Biggest flop in his career. Yeah. Just don't underestimate and undermine the audience right. intelligence level. You know, build the shit. They'll be there. Mm -hmm. I'm, that's I mean, maybe naive thinking. No, I, no, I, I get it, bro. I totally get it. I, and you're right. The movie didn't do as well, and it was a remake that should have been. It was a remake of like it was like a remake, remake of a remake or some shit like that, right? Yeah, and it's like yeah, nobody was looking to see black people in that. <laughs> if they was to remake that anyway, the def, it was it was a poor. Yeah, it was a remake of like an old British movie. Yeah, yeah. If I'm so. not mistaken, but I get it. You're yeah, right. You we know. always say Hollywood don't really know. They don't know shit. It's a lot of motherfuckers yeah. trying not to lose their jobs, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot of motherfuckers that because they wear that suit and they sit in that office and they drive that Benz, feel like they have to walk their ass in the kitchen and make choices about the food when they right. ain't chefs. Right. Just right. sign the check. Right. That's what y'all do. Just sign the motherfucking check. Yeah. Let directors direct. Let creativity people be creativity. You know, yeah. they, they just stop feeling like you gotta validate your position. Yeah. I don't think Jerry like Jones goes into the locker room and tells niggas how to run a play. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, and this is why I get called bitter. Wait, this wait. Why so, I get called angry. Okay, so so you are <laughs> wait, so you are aware of the narrative around your name. Yes. But I also think that people go with that without having really talked to me to see that what's behind it that, that that's my question my question was going to be do you care about the narrative around your name do you care to change people's opinion of you or do you just go hey if they think that i don't care because you know that at some point do you know do you think or you don't care that it could potentially affect your money i i i, I i'm not gonna lie and say i don't care okay I do care and you know this is one of the reasons why I love Patrice so much, because I feel like in certain ways, I mirror, we mirror each other in that way because he had a rough time in right. terms of his mm -hmm. personality. Now, I personally think he's a little bit more hardcore than me, mm -hmm. um, but I'm getting to a point where it's like, 
I want to turn it around, but at what cost? My, you know, my manager has turn it around. Turn, turn what around? Just, just maybe turn the perception around. Okay. Or, or, okay. You know, my manager had a great quote. He goes, "You want to be rich, or you want to be right, because you very seldom <laughs> can be both." Mm. Oh, like and, and, and I'm going. Of course, I want to be rich, but, but I, I enjoy being right about what I know I'm right about. Right. Mm -hmm. And and I don't want to compromise my comedic integrity for the sake of money if what I believe in is right. Right. So, you know, but I, I'm telling you, I'm as time goes by, I'm starting to ask what's the going rate on the soul. <laughs> I, have, I have not asked that question yet. I grew up, look, I grew up in bed Brooklyn, when it was the worst neighborhood in America. Right. I had the most incredible childhood with little to no money. Right. So that, I say that to say, it's a blessing. That was a blessing because money has never ruled me. So to say X amount of dollars to me, it means nothing to me because I know I had a great life with no money and I can again. Do I want to? No, no. But I know <laughs> that money isn't something you could just go, how about this much? Do this for this much. I'm good, bro. Listen, I had a great life too without money, but since I've come to Hollywood and done my career, I've tasted lobster. I don't want to go back to fish sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come on. I'm, I'm with you. Fish sticks was the shit. Fish sticks was the shit. Fish sticks was the shit. Like the government cheese. Nigga, it was the shit back in the day. If you, if you eat fish sticks now by choice, that's okay. Yeah. But if you eat fish sticks now because you... Because of circumstance. Because of circumstances, yeah. this is then that's forward. when we have a problem. You know what I mean? Like I hear, like when we be talking sometimes. No, you, you know, I hear to choose to do that. I hear Tony say, you know, we talk. Tony sometimes be like, "Yeah, man, I hear people complaining about the price of gas. What we complaining about? You got to get to where you got to go." Yo, I said that last yeah, night. Yeah. I said that Dude, last put night. Put the gas in the tank. I said. I said yeah. that last night. I said, "Yeah, nigga," but that's easier to say if <laughs> we making forty, fifty, sixty, <laughs> seventy thousand a weekend. Right. A nigga that's making. A thousand dollars a week <laughs> is like right. that's my rule. That's my rule. Right. I never. Yeah. My rule is I never look at the price of the gas. I just pull in and, and pump it's, gas it's like, yo, because you got to get gas anyway. Right. You this have nigga, to fill your tank. This nigga's like, you know what? Fuck it. I may not. I may just take the bus. It's two dollars cheaper <laughs> than to fill my tank up. So it's like you know, I, I get it. It's a hard thing to choose sometimes between right or <clears throat> you know the money. So with that being said, you know you know how the internet. Going wrong with everything. Right. So apparently. Something, something you heard about him on the internet? Yeah. I want to hear this shit. No, we all know. So apparently you already sold your soul. <laughs> apparently. Back when you and Tiff did that. And I, 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 I got to stop you. I can't talk about that. Okay, you can't talk. Okay. I can't. My blood. Because that shit is still okay, okay, law, okay. In, the, in the pipeline. And, legal, and, legal, and trust me. Legal, legal stuff. Yeah, legal okay, stuff. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Because okay. believe me, I want to. Okay. And no, it's no, killing no, no, me no, that I can't. It. But okay. I, I want to. Okay. No, we get it. So, and I was saying that we we know how to business go and how the civilians always attack us online and assume shit that right. they don't have no idea about right. you know what i mean where they'll think because you was in a movie for five minutes that you know your soul was sold like you mm. sold your soul for that or oh, they think you was in a movie for five minutes you rich as shit or that you rich as shit that they don't right. really understand you know what i mean the the cadence of the business and how the business really goes you know what i'm saying right so let me ask you i heard you say you was going to theaters now do you think your social media contribute to that because as i be seeing now you're, you're killing with the views that's why killing with... that's why because because okay. i i took a page out of matt rife's book okay and i know matt and i called him up and said Nigga, what are you doing because you went from here to here he mm -hmm. goes yeah I, I pay a videographer to come out on the road with me shoot my clips and, and put them on social media so i was like fuck it you know let me bite the bullet spend the money and uh one of my first clips got 27 million views look at this thing Dude, that's so funny you said that because like uh, five days ago, I said, "Let me go ahead and start this TikTok, man. I ain't want to do this shit. Right. Let me, I'm let me, a dinosaur, let me nigga. This TikTok, yeah. yeah. It ain't even about being a dinosaur, but it's 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 good and it's of course you know it's pluses and minuses. Right. Anything that opens more lanes for us, the guys that really that do, do what we do, like write the jokes, perform the mm -hmm. the, the purest. Right. Mm -hmm. If there's another lane for us to be seen, if we got to do this thing over here mm -hmm. for you to come and see what we really do, I'm with that." I don't want to feel like I'm tapping. But listen, no, but it's the thing. You, like I told Rob Stapleton, me and Rob Stapleton had the same conversation. Shout out Rob Stapleton. I said, bro, you thinking you got to do social media the way they do social media. You got to do social media the way you want to do it mm -hmm. because there's a lane for you as well. This guy's doing this thing and you think, oh, I got to do this shit 
and it's corny to you or it's young boy to you. Don't do that. Do what Rob Stapleton does. But the do mind blowing, do what Aries does. I'm gonna do what Tone does. The thing that fucks you up with it is, as we are purists, artists, we care about the funny. We want our comedy cocaine to be pure and uncut. Mm -hmm. So we giving you the baddest product, Blue right. Magic. Right. But it ain't Meanwhile, that. I hear I this gonna, nigga that got a bag on his magic. head. I was gonna name my special Blue okay. Magic. For that Here's reason. a nigga got a bag over his head playing with tennis balls. 30 million views. Yeah. I'm giving you blood, sweat, tears, and writing talent. Uh, 5 million. Yeah. But look, so when you shit, go, look, do it the way good. you want to do it. But look, yes. But I'm going, why I'm doing it? I'm giving the, the, the look, people blue magic. You want to be rich or you want to be right? <laughs> You want to be rich or you want to be right? So, right? so it's expensive. Right, right is five million. Right is five million. You got to settle for five million. Which ain't be bad. Right. Which ain't bad. But be right. You going into theaters? You do. Listen, I'm telling you right now. You said you want to change the narrative. You are at the precipice of changing your whole narrative. If you about to go into theaters, that means the view. The people are coming, right? Yes or no? Right. Now, show's over. Smile, motherfucker. Hug, hug the fat bitch like you said. <laughs> Sell your merch. Shake a hand. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Show. And they're going to leave like, yo, we thought, because everybody heard the negative narrative about you. They're going to leave like, yo, he wasn't, that motherfucker's cool as shit. But that's what everybody says when they really take the time to know me. Right. Mm -hmm. but we, Self investigation. Look, we, we, live in this, we live in this time. Everything is this now. Nobody got time to take the know. That's why people meet like this now. Swipe, swipe. Let's go on a date. Because nobody got time to know. It's, we, move, we live in a society like this now. Mm -hmm. I like you, you like me, let's go on a date, right? That's the society we live in. I'm going to tell you something Christopher Titus told me one time. You know Christopher Titus? Yeah. Christopher Titus, I had never met him. I had never met Christopher Titus. I was at the Improv on Melrose one night. Christopher Titus walked in. I'm a big fan. I watched the show. We had the show on Fox. I was a fan. I don't have, I know just to set the, the stage of who I am, just going forward so you know who I am. I know comedy is bigger than me. I don't have an ego when it comes to stand-up comedy. I know it's bigger than me. I know my window will close one day. I'm fine with that. I'm just happy that I'm in the window now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do everything I can to stay in the window as long as possible. So if I got to switch over here a couple times and pivot and, you know, reinvent myself just to stay in the window a little longer, I will. But I go to the, so I say that to say I'm not, I have no ego. I will fan out when I see a comic because I, that's, mm -hmm. comics are the people I love the most. Right. Right. Then it's like boxers and football players and shit like that. But comics, number one. I'm in the improv one night. Christopher Titus is at the bar. I'm like, I got to go say hi to Christopher Titus. I woke up. Hey, man, big fan. Tony Rock, nice to meet you. Holy shit, you're Tony Rock? I go, yeah. Can I fuck? Do you have a minute? I go, yeah. We sit down and we talk. He goes, bro, every comedy club I've been to, I ask them, like, who's the guy you guys like? Who's the guy you don't like? Who works hard? Who's funny? Bro, they fucking love you on the road. I don't know if you know this. Every club's like, Tony Rock's the nicest guy. He takes pictures with everybody. He pays the whole wait staff. He takes them out for drinks and dinner at the end of the weekend. And just all, they sing my praises. And he goes, never fucking lose that, bro. Because I, this is Christmas Titus. I was the biggest asshole in the business. Man. I had a sitcom. I was cursing out network execs and writers. I fired writers. I, I was, I didn't, I, bro, it just got to my head and I fucking fucked it all up. And now I'm working to get it all back. If I had that narrative that you have, I could have been 10 years ahead of where I am now. So never lose that. And I'm, I'm not saying he said it to me, so I said, oh, I got to stay nice. It's just my, it's just who I am. I'm so happy to be here. I love this so much that why would I stain it any, any way by being mean to fans or, mm -hmm. or, or wait staff or, you know, the people that are bookers and whatever. I love it too much. You know what I'm saying? So now you're about to change the narrative. Be aware of that. Be cognizant of that. Like, Two great quotes I ever heard. One was from your brother, and he said, uh, the, the worst job in Hollywood is better than the best job out of it. Wow. And, <laughs> and one of the reasons why that quote was so profound to me is because I go, you know, the one thing I would never want to be doing this business, I don't want to ever be the Nickelodeon dad. Don't I don't want to be Rondell Sheridan. You know, the but don't bump jokes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a hard edge type of I want, like I said, my comedy cocaine mm -hmm. to be uncut. Right. But mm -hmm. when Chris said that, I was like, damn, okay. I kind of. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So now, do you wear the dress now because of that? <laughs> well, I don't have a problem with that, and I never have. And before we jump into that, let me just say the second quote. You know, Patrice said, uh, he, he goes, what I found out about Hollywood is they will take 30% talent, 
70% nice guy over 70% talent, 30% asshole. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Because he, he goes, I used to come on set and basically tell people, paraphrasing, I'm talented, suck my dick, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do first? <laughs> sounds, that sounds exactly like something Patrice would say. Right, right. Uh, so the dress thing, um, you know, I take the same stance as, as Marlon Wayans. I don't know where black people got to this point where we've become brainwashed to believe that we should ignore what is art, you know? Um, and I say, come on, man, let's, let's have some balance. Right. If, if every role a black person was in was hat in hand, begging for white man, slave, street nigga, thug, nigga in a dress, this is a different conversation. Right. But when you look at things in terms of totality, from we can go down the line from dramatic actors to comedic actors. First of all, putting on a dress is mainly comedic. It's comedic. Mm -hmm. uh, other than, you know, I, you might want to say Wesley Snipes and Tu Wong Fu, Julie Newmar, which, you know, kind of was a comedy, yeah, but so wasn't. Comedy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But nonetheless, you know, men in drag, comedy staple. That's just the old comedy staple. Right. And then I go, and you look at Denzel, Wesley, Morgan, Sam Jackson, Vin Denzel Ray. Denzel dress? No, 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 no. Okay. That's what I'm saying. When you look at all the black male actors that have been out there, you, you've seen us play everything from loving fathers to devoted husbands to politicians, lawyers, doctors, cops, detectives, superheroes, presidents. We've had far more positive imagery of us not in dresses than we have in dresses. So as long as the scales of balance right. tip that way, it's okay comedically to have that every now and then for the sake of a laugh. And then I, I, I ask the question, what are y'all really mad at? Because if you, if you protested about black men in dresses, then go all the way with your protests. Are you telling me we put an asterisk near Eddie Murphy for doing the clumps, grandmama, mama, clump, respuse? Are we putting an asterisk near Martin Lawrence where the Martin show was beloved yeah. in it and mama Payne, her grandmama clump, mama, uh, big mama house? Right. Are we doing that to Jamie Foxx, the triple threat actor, singer, comedian? Are right. we doing that to Flip Wilson? Does, does his legend go away? Richard Pryor in the toy? And then, and then I hear black people go, well, that's why we love Dave Chappelle. He never did that shit. Yeah, your yeah, hero yeah. did too. Robin yeah, Hood yeah. men of tights. Yeah, I tell people So it's like, you know, I never tights. bought into it's demeaning for black men. Because again, cinematically, we have seen more black men in upstanding, proud, chest out, chin up positions mm -hmm. than we have in dresses. Well, I, I, I did hear you. Wait, wait, wait. Can I respond? I think. Want to go? Yeah, I no. just. I, I heard you say the similar sentiments on uh, uh, Vlad. Uh -huh. yeah, Vlad. Now, I've heard those arguments, and I, I tend to agree with you, but don't you think that there's a difference between somebody all of a sudden coming to Dave Chappelle and say, hey, put on this dress. And he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Hey, you got to do this. And then there's a struggle there, and he says no. Or some other actor choosing to do it after the, the, the contention, and Tyler Perry, the, the Wayans, it's their production and they're choosing to put it on because that's, it's under their control. No one is telling them to do that. Don't you think there's a difference? No, because at the end of the day, it's, no. it's still their choice. And, and if they choose to do it or choose not to do it for whatever reason that is, how does it hurt them? It it's doesn't. not going to hurt them at all. It, it doesn't hurt them. So is there a difference if you're being told by somebody that has that's the you know quote unquote check writer the paymaster hey we want you to put on this dress versus this is my movie it's my production it's white chicks well if 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 the person writing the check comes to me and says put on this dress or else well then I, now we talking about what i believe in morally and i'm not gonna let or else stop me mm -hmm. from going well i'm not gonna let you force me into something that i don't believe in now comedically in terms of context if i think that this uh, can take the scene from here to here and make it hilariously funny sure. based off what I'm going to bring to it in that dress, well, then that's the decision I'm going to make. Okay, mm -hmm. that that's individual choice. So at, at the end of the day, you can't be responsible for other people's perception of what you're doing, right? I don't care about other people's uh, perception uh, about what I'm doing. Of, of course, but that's what it's turned into when you have people saying things like, oh, well, Dave Chappelle never did and not knowing their history and not knowing that piece mm -hmm. right there. But in my view, if you choose to do it under certain circumstances, then you 
you lend your blackness to be controlled, emasculated, and now it's confusing to, to kids who see, oh, I thought you was a superhero or whatever. It's only the confusing the kids that ain't raised right. Well, hey, <laughs> my mother, my mother many, raised me how to, to, to be an individual she, and think for myself. Did, but this, so like Charles Barkley, I'm not a role model. I can't be your, I can't do what your mother and your father is supposed to do for you. That's you. But what about, I, I saw Charles Barkley come out looking like not Charles Barkley. When he wore a dress? Yeah, yeah. Charles no, Barkley. That, but, but that was lot. recently. So well, I don't. I didn't see anything recently. It, well, it looked recent mm -hmm. to me. Was was it recently? He, uh, Charles Barkley been in the dress quite a few times. Well, <laughs> when it's time, when it, when it's dress wearing time. But look, you said he'll, he'll you, get up you, in the you did say there. something that I'm. You said comedically. Okay, I get that. I get that. Like to, and I, we've had this, this this same argument on this podcast before, and it went for a very long time. Comedically, I. I can understand what you're trying to do. But you ever watch the news and something happens and somebody says, well, uh, not even the news, something happens outside today. So a white woman or a black, a, a black person, and they go, if he was white, it would have been different, right? Watch the news, something happens to a black guy. Well, if he was white, they wouldn't have did him like that. What they're always saying, the bigger thing, no, the bigger statement they're making is that there's different rules for black and white, yes. right? There always has been. Right? Yes. So when it comes to something like that, I get what you're saying comedically. But there are different rules for black men. We are responsible for the imagery that we put out there. We in the industry, as black men, are responsible for the imagery that we put out there. Would you agree with that? Yes. And I think that the majority of those black men who that responsibility falls into in terms of their hands has done it justice. Okay. And I think that because we're responsible of the imagery we put out there, like you said, this business is a fucked up, grimy, slimy, underhanding, underhanded business. I think that one of the ways that they try to lessen the power of a black man in the industry that has, that is putting positive imagery out there is put him in a dress. He's getting too he's getting too powerful. But what is it? Put stopped? him in a dress. What is it truly stopped? Chris was in a dress in front of And Prince. I hated that shit. Okay, and he's still Chris Rock the legend. Yeah. He'll still sell out a, yeah. an arena. Yeah. He's still he's still uh, 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 loved, uh, uh, respected, you know, he's still thought of as one of the most intellectual geniuses. What did it change? It did. And 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 if and if you're raising your kid the right way, they're focused more on that about Chris Rock and not the dress. The dress was a moment. The intelligence is a career. The longevity is a career. The respect is a, is a career. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not I, gonna I, let I, a I, moment destroy a career. I think, uh, listen, we're gonna agree, we're gonna agree to disagree, <laughs> but I do, I, I think that we, I just feel like the black man in me knows that I have a responsibility to what I show them, what I show other black people. That's the price that you have to be willing to pay whatever that is to you, whatever that is in that circumstance. So, and I think you could be funny if, like, like Dave said when he was on Oprah, I think it was. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, everybody does it, Dave, and it's like, well, if everybody does it, then it's old. It's old. It's an old it's premise. Old then why don't we do something better? I think we could challenge ourselves. But Dave didn't know that everybody did it back when he did it. When I don't, I don't he remember Dave doing about it. it. No, he did it. Yeah, he was like, I don't remember Dave doing it. No, he did. Men in tights. Okay, and then he did something with. I don't know. Was it Howard Stern? Where he had on the the, the big the boobs, the, the boobs and the earring and the lipstick and no, that was that wasn't that was a, they showed it on Howard Stern. And I'm not defending him. Listen, right. that was like a high school production they did, and he put the right. balloons up on the shirt that, and the earrings. I remember that, right. but that was like they showed it on Howard Stern. Right. Yeah. That's, that, that's if you know better, then then do better. Back then, I mean, you can't. But but who? But, but what you're saying is, if you know better, do better. But you state that like that's a fact. That is a subjective viewpoint. It is. Hey, you can't. So don't. I don't like I'm when people state opinions like they're facts. Well, I'm it's not an trying, opinion. I'm not trying to say no, I'm not that saying. That. I'm not saying. I'm just saying it. And you go. If you know better, do better. Based on what you believe, that's knowing better. But to someone else, that ain't got nothing to do with knowing better. Well, that's why. That's I said, an artistic choice. That's why I said that for you, you have to be willing to pay that price. No, as a black person, as a black man, knowing that you're doing this, you have to be willing to pay that price for what it means, whatever the whatever the. You don't think that everybody that's done it has met with a, tre a tremendous amount of like backlash? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some more than others. I, I, the, the real question is, do you give a fuck? And why would you? 
<laughs> Let me tell you something. One of my most proudest Martin moments. Had as much backlash. I don't think. Eddie no, I don't believe them either. That and I don't <laughs> believe. And if Martin, Jamie Fox, or any of those guys come to your town to perform, you them seats are full. That. You don't. Yeah, they don't care about that. But you said as much. So he did. You think he faced backlash? I, well, I say if anything, it would be now, <laughs> and it's fake backlash because they're just jumping on the bandwagon of what is new out now you know with the cat william because cat william's been exposing the whole dressing with martin he done that some years back oh man but, yeah but it's like <clears throat> back then like i was saying before we loved it it was funny it was it was comedic i wasn't aware of the dress um situation until i saw Chappelle interviewing with oprah that oh. of that it was an agenda you know, behind I don't it. Buy into that. I, you know, that that <laughs> boogeyman theory. I just don't buy into that. Okay, so wait, the it, guy it, that the, thinks this that hates the whole industry doesn't buy into the boogeyman theory. No, no, no I'm talking about specifically just about that, that. Just that. Okay. But that, you know, are we out to make black men look weak no. and, and 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 show them in this fucked up light by? Okay, I, who, who's who thinks these men are weak? I don't think Jamie Foxx is weak. He's a brilliant I, motherfucker, can, Oscar winner. Sing his ass off. Mm -hmm. Great actor. I'm not thinking weak at all. Well, some people, some people make an association of reality through the images that they see. Can we agree on that? Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was another. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, go, go, go. go. I, I'm just gonna say, when you put your superhero. Whoever that is, let's say it's let's say it's Denzel Washington. That's the obvious one, the the epitome of manhood and masculinity. Now, if he was gonna do a film, and all of a sudden, you you see him. Doesn't matter what went on behind the scenes. You see him in an emasculated position. He is being I don't know bent over like like he Damn, was the Fox. dude. But, but he was the dude. He, no wait wait he but was the dude. He, have he you glory? seen that? Oh okay. That's a totally different thing. Okay. Bent over versus a dress. Okay, in a dress, bent over. I'm just saying well, you, you double you, down. I'm doubling. <laughs> down. I'm trying to make it clear to you. I'm just saying that <laughs> there is an agenda that makes that make and this is my opinion and it's all in my head. Like you, this is in my head, but it, it's true or untrue. There is an agenda to make sure that the perception of black men is a certain thing. I just saw something really great. Uh, Sam Jackson was asked in an interview, you know, you do a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies. He loves saying nigga. You don't, that don't bother you? You don't think that that's coming from a racist place? Sam Jackson goes, every movie I've ever done with Quentin, he makes my character the most profound and smartest character. And I believe that there's no way he could be racist if he can do that. And then someone in the comments said, well, Denzel would disagree with you because Denzel won't work with Quentin for that reason. Oh, wow. Does that, really? make, does that make Sam that. or Denzel any less than each other? No. It the doesn't. black community sees both them niggas as heroes. Right. It, it doesn't. But Shout out to Sam. We're just working with him. Yeah. He was work, he's working <laughs> with him. Yeah. 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 I didn't say that. Yeah. Uh, I think that the agenda that says you have to have a white savior in Black Panther in in in, in 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 Black Panther Wakanda. We had, we need to have this element that makes look. You can't do this without white people. I didn't see that when I, when I saw okay. that movie. I didn't okay. see that at all. Wait, wait, that, listen, there was that, too many niggas in that movie to pay attention okay. to one white okay. snowflake. We're gonna we're, we're, at, we're at ninety minutes. We're gonna okay. we're gonna pivot because we we I, I, I still got a few more questions and we we're gonna just yeah. agree to disagree on that. Okay. I'm I'm not wearing a dress. I, I hear you. Okay. Personal choice. How do you feel? You of all people. And, and let me just say this. Go. One of my most proudest moments ever, the Mad TV skit I did with DMX where I played his mother in a dress and some Tims and some granny glasses and a wig. Every nigga that's ever seen that went, that shit's classic. Rest in peace, DMX. So Rest I don't peace. give a fuck about the naysayers, but go ahead. Yeah, I never saw that. I got so wait, that. you of all people, you of all people should know and should be well-versed mm -hmm. with all the comic beef going on now. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about... You could dress them all, dress one at a time. What do you think? Where, where's this coming from? And is there a is there a solution? The solution would be to stop. You okay. know, I, and, and I caught a lot of flack for my take on the Cat right, Williams. Right, thing. right. You know, uh, I said niggas, we love drama. Yeah, like you do. It, it, like rap battles. Oh, that nigga <laughs> <say!"> <laughs> That's what the Cat Williams thing was. Yeah, and 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 when I heard people going, man, we must protect him at all costs. Like, slow down. 
The nigga didn't turn the world on his axis. He ain't cured <laughs> cancer. He ain't solved black, uh, uh, black uh, money financial issues, <laughs> racism in America. He simply said, hey, this nigga stole this, or this nigga looked like a walrus, or I didn't suck no dick, or such, whatever. The... It's, it's, it's a news clip. And it's yeah. hot until the next news clip. Right. And, and my thing was, rather than, than focus all our attention on that, 53 million views. Yes. Why can't we figure out a way to go, all right, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, uh, uh, David, was it uh, David Geffen, uh, d- d- Steven Spielberg, Jeffrey Eisenberg, they got DreamWorks. Where's our DreamWorks? We steady coming to Hollywood, hat in hand. Can you please, will I, will you let me? And I'm just going, we got Oprah, we got Jordan, we got Cosby. We oh, got, I say that all the time. We got yo, billionaires. We say that all the time. Yeah. And, and, and Tyler Perry is our only one. Why don't we have five or six? Not even that. Listen, bro, now we're going we to extend this shit for another two hours. Not even that. All those people you named, Oprah, Jordan, who else? Uh, Cosby. Cosby, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. Uh, Magic. Magic, yeah. Yo, where's our school? <laughs> fuck a, a fuck a production company and a fucking and the only 20 reason acre... why I say the production company is because I'm going to let one thing bleed into something else. If we produce a million dollar movies, Bruh. now we can funnel that movie into schools, Where's into the our hospital, into the hospital. Where's our financial literacy program? In some basement. Where Where's that at? Niggas don't want to hear that. They want to hear. Cedric looked like a walrus. Oh, shit! <laughs> Yo, they want to hear that. You're right. Yeah. You're right. And I'm sitting there wrong. going, we, we got we got Viola Davis. We got, uh, Gap, uh, uh, what's my girl's name? Uh, Tar- Taraji P. Henson. Black actresses talking about inequality. Crying, mm-hmm. talking about they not getting their paper. So why don't we focus on trying to make sure they're straight? Mm-hmm. Our black women are straight right. in this industry. Because like I said, I know a lot of people go, Man, fuck them. They view Hollywood people as a bunch of big overpaid crybabies. Right. Yeah, yeah. How that how, to, how that like, affect my no, life? No, they, it they, can. They look at us. They look at us like athletes. It's like, oh, you you crying about uh, you didn't sign for a hundred million. You want a hundred and ten million. It's like, nah, it's a it's a difference, motherfucker. Like we but, we're but, at the but, negotiating but, table. But more important to your point, if we in the community formed like the Avengers and, right. and made the kind of money that we could make on our own, mm. now that money can be, be funneled back into. The, the the communities so okay. we can get those so so why do you think why do you think the oprahs and the magics and the mics and the, don't go because you said he's the only one because you said he's the only one i'll use him as the example go to tyler perry and go let's partner and make this thing even bigger I, and I, have our own network our I, own I, shows I, I, don't, I don't i know it's he got the he got the well, studio magic got a spy he got the studio with what what does 30 acres it? or something like that they have it right. with, uh, yo why, where's the affordable else? housing on, on on 10 of those acres right. where's the where's the grocery stores on right. one of those acres where's the you're talking about group ep- economics this is the same thing that if listen i, I said it to say this and now we're gonna really go on a tangent if you think the white man is going to help us out of this situation we in, you are you are you are just misled. Why would he? You are yo, black exactly. people, I Fox, you know I say this all the time. Black people. You hearing this? You ready for this? Black people are worth too much to white people in this fucked up condition that we are in to ever let us out of it. Out of it yeah. And the reason why we won't they get will out of never it, let us out of it because we why make we won't get out of it ourselves is because we stay in the condition that we're in. Which I, I, I'm not trying to get deep, but no, get deep. Slavery played a hell of a number on us. Bruh. So this divide and conquer mentality, this I got mine, nigga. You better get yours mentality. Mm-hmm. It's ingrained in us. It's, no, it's, it's ingrained in it's, us. It's, it's I got mine. You better get yours. It's light skin. It's dark skin. It's black men. It's black women. It's it's, it's very many variables. Right. So so they did so, a job. They did a number on us, man. They well, did a number so, on so us. So there is an agenda, right? As far as that goes. Yeah. But, but I say this but, all the time. But not the, but not the dress. That, look, that, that, I, I, that, I, that, that, hold on. <laughs> I, I say this all the time, though. I think one of our downfalls for black people, once we make it and get a lot of money and success, is that we don't move lateral with, or we don't take bring the elevator down to bring certain people up. What we do is we then pair up and then we look at it as a privilege and we so hyped to show off that now we have white billionaire and white millionaire friends. That's why you see people like the Meek Mills, my, I'm friends with Robert Kraft or Jay is friends with all these white billionaires and million, all these rich black people when they get it, they 
want to feel solidified. So now their new group. They, they, they think the white man ice it, is colder. It, it, they, think it, the white, is, they think the white man ice is colder. The white man water is wetter. Right. So now they hang up with yeah. the rich billion white millionaires and billionaires. And it's just like, yo, like, nigga, you wouldn't be hanging with him if it wasn't. I agree. I look, I agree. But I agree. I agree. I'm going to say that first. I 100% agree with you. But what about the black dude that did send the elevator back down for the black person and that motherfucker came up and robbed him and said, I'm going to be your, your, your financial, your financial. Oh, uh, it's more crap. Well, it's well, more well, he, he, has, he has to be, and, he has to be and, dealt and with accordingly. Yeah. And, or he, I'm going to be your, your assistant and steal from you. Or I'm going to be your. Okay. He has. He I hired she, my uncle as my manager for one summer. That nigga stole so much money from me. Well, isn't that like a rule that you really don't hire your family? Yeah. Like, they're, well, they're hey, one I thought, be able you know, there's a lot of rocks. I thought, you know. When I, when I say bring <laughs> the elevator This motherfucker was saying send the deposit and kept the deposit. <laughs> well, so I'm like, yo, they didn't send the deposit. I'm getting paid at the end of the show. Like, wait. But they oh, we sent it to him. They gotta, he gone. You send that elevator right. down. It got to be to qualifying. That's right. Folk. That's right. It just That's can't right. be to any nigga. It you can't be, send it down. Right. You got to get on the elevator with a college degree. Yeah. It's got to be like, yo, my man. My, my man Jeff is That's a my bit. crew. He's a director. That's a bit. He's a hell of a director. He's a hell of a writer. When I make it and get to that point, yo, uh, Come on. these are the directors you could choose from. Nah, I don't want to choose from none of these. I'm, I'm choosing my man Jeff. <laughs> like LeBron, look, LeBron was it's in high school. He said, yo, yeah. I'm going pro. Y'all know I'm going pro. You go to law school, right. you go to this, you yeah, go to yeah. that. Because when I go, I'm going to come back get y'all niggas. Yeah. They, they was all like bet. They all played their part. It's, it's like what I said before, group economics, you alluded to it, and that's what you guys are talking about. Uh, you, you have to have those people who understand that. We are going through a period of time where we're awakening to, hey, this is what we need to do right. with our money, with our families. And you're going to have those people who still have that mindset uh, colonized mindset to where oh I gotta get mine. Why are you pointing? At him? <laughs> I, I'll colonized I'll, mindset. I know I was not doing. You. That. I was not doing that. I was, I was trying to come up with a word. I got you, you know, but yeah. I got you. So it's like this is something we all got to be aware of. So when you hire your uncle, there's like let me see if I yeah, can motherfucker robbed me, man. But you they got to get dealt with. Of course, it's, it's all like listen, not him again. It's all good. Yeah, because every time I, I'm not even making this up. Every time I've ever been wronged. Yeah. When my heart was like into, like my heart was pure, yeah, and I've been wronged monetarily, I got that shit back times ten every yeah. time. I want to, they know I say this all the time. I'm one of God's favorite people. Yeah. I'll do something for a friend and like put some money out there and get wronged, and it might be a year later, five years later, whatever. I get that shit back times ten. Next time yeah. you talk to God, tell him. Clip. <laughs> uh, clip over. I'm a whole nigga. No, wait. Uh, so, where's the call? Wait. Where's the call? Over. So what's the what for you? You as the entertainer, the comedian. The businessman, what's the thing? And whatever that thing is that pops in your head when I ask the question, what's the thing that you want to do the most? What's that thing? Creatively? The thing. What what pops in your head just now? Uh, I got this movie idea I'm trying to get off the ground. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's written? No, no. It, it's it's. I'm talking with some people and trying to have... It's going to be the kind of thing where I know I'm going to have to finance it myself because it's. Uh, I'm going there. Look... I would like to partner with you on that. Okay. If there's a space for me to partner with you on it, I would like to do that. Okay. I wrote a movie. Twenty twenty. What's this? Twenty twenty four. I wrote a movie twenty. Let's say twenty fifteen. Based on a movie, I I watched the movie one night, and was like, that shit was fucking great. But if they added a little bit of comedy to it, it could have been something totally different. So I wrote it, rewrote it in twenty fifteen. Let a few people read it. Eh, eh, I mean, cool, but da da da. Okay, we wrote it again in like 2017. Right. Oh, okay, okay, I see what you're doing. I see, but you know, this, this, this. 2019, wrote it again. Let people read it. Yo, this shit, I ain't gonna front, son. That shit was all right. Pandemic hit. 2020, my son was born in, in May of 2020, but the rest of the year, that was the most biggest thing in 2020, but the, the rest of the year, I said, okay, I got nowhere to go, I got nothing to do. I started pulling out old scripts and old joke ideas and everything was like, let's revisit everything. I rewrote it again. I changed it from a motion picture to a episodic, seven episodes. Everybody I let read it coming out of the pandemic was like, yo, this, this is it. This is going to go. I let, I'm not going to say her name, a casting director, a friend of mine, let her read it. She said, I want in. This is going. I want in. 
and here's the guy I see that's gonna play the character. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I wrote this for me. <laughs> she already had a motherfucker right. attached. Mm-hmm. I said, no, 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 I wrote this for me. And she said, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm out. Damn. Yeah. Came out the pandemic, everything started moving again. I started letting people read it. Yo, everybody read it. This is that shit, bro. Got new management coming out the pandemic, 2022, 2023. All right, I got the game show. I sent everything. I got the game show idea. I got the tour idea. I got the documentary. I got the, here's my episodic. They read it. It's phenomenal. And you could probably tell me more about this than, than, than I would learn, right, that I knew. They said, we love it. It's phenomenal, but you can't do it right now. Hmm. And that fucked me up. And they said, you got to do something else first so that when you bring, present this, it's like, okay, now this has more legs. And I, I, I swear I thought about firing them, up, firing them on the spot. You're saying it's good. You're saying it's great. You love it. But this is not a vehicle for you to take out right now. Can I just ask, what are they basing that off of? I have no fucking idea. Because I can tell you why they won't do mine. Well, or, or why people are- Why won't they do yours? I want to do a balls out, uh, balls to wall comedy about slavery. A comedy about slavery. about slavery. Oh, he just said he's gonna go all in. He said, yeah. "I thought you meant all in like dramatic." No, no, no. A comedy about slavery. How funny it was. Well, my thinking was this: no matter what you're going through, and we know this as comedians, no matter how horrific your situation, you can't turn off the the, the nature of laughter. You telling me slaves didn't laugh? No, I, bro. I say that on stage. They, they didn't I laugh say that two didn't. things. I say I say on stage. I say they always show slaves in movies like, yeah. like, fucking malnourished. And yeah. I'm like, yo, slaves was gorgeous. Don't let them lie to you. We was lifting all day in the sun all day. Motherfuckers was tan and ripped. Right. That's we was in the sun all day lifting shit, carrying shit all day. Yo, don't let them fucking sell you a false narrative. We was fucking gorgeous. That's why I miss Ann. That's why them always. bitches was like, yo, look at this nigga with these fucking six pack abs and this fucking. Uh, uh, we was gorgeous, bro. Right. Don't let them tell you that we wasn't fucking. Eh. Right. We was ripped. Right. We was beautiful specimens. Yeah, and you know the nature of where we're at now with wokeness, political correctness, everybody being scared. Yeah, it's the perfect time. But I say that, I say that we was gorgeous and I always say, yo, black people laugh more than anybody else because we had it the worst. Yeah. Right. So the only thing that got us through, two things that got us through, our faith, that's why we are the most religious, religious people in the world, our faith got us through and our ability to laugh. Right. So I'm always like, yo, you know at the end of the night we was in the fucking, in them little, again, what, yeah. not townhouse, what they call them, the little, <laughs> the little back house, shack the the back shacks. House. little shack in the back, like, Slave man, quarters. Look, look, man, they whipped the shit out of Bubba today, they fucking, <laughs> that nigga got more lashes than a motherfucking, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they had to have done yeah. that, yeah, 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 yeah. they had to have done that, because right. they had to wake up the next day and go do the worst right. life ever from sun up to sundown. Right. So our ability, our ability to laugh and our ability, and our faith was the only thing, the only thing could have got us through. If so. it's pulled off right, that if you could, could yeah, I think you'd. I, listen, I, I know how, it, because again, the nature of what it is, but if you pull it off right, know what you're gonna need. Know what you're gonna need to make this possible? I'm gonna tell you right now on camera what he's gonna need to make this possible. You ready? All three cameras. Some Jews. <laughs> you're gonna need some power. You you're gonna need some powerful <laughs> Jews to pull this off. I'm not I'm being dead ass serious. You're gonna need some Jews high up. Yeah. To make this, you're gonna need some fucking. Okay, we believe you don't in think this. They would be scared though, too. For what? Again, the nature of what it is. For it's what? Not gonna be, they're For not what? gonna get any. Scared of what? Yeah. The backlash they, on them? Yeah, they funding it. They got the money. Hey, they it, got was, the, it was Aries' idea. It, yeah. We just thought it was a great idea. If we thought creatively it was something that had never been done before. A black man decided to do it. Hero, you gonna do all you gonna do all the bad <laughs> press? They gonna do all the good it. press? Yeah, they can and they gonna get paid before you do. If they could get away with, with <laughs> the funniest scene before. in Django, to me, was how they did with Jonah Hill was going back and forth about the right. hoods, right? The hoodies, right? Uh, the Ku the Ku Klux Klan hoodie. Right. I say, yo, if they was able to make that funny, which it was really funny. Right now, that was a moment. That You're was talking a about moment. ninety minutes. So the whole yeah. thing. Just, <laughs> yeah. You know the scene out. I'm talking about, right? I don't remember the scene. So I think I, I seen I, Django like one time. Okay. Are, are you suggesting like, all right, this, like a a film or episodic or whatever? The characters are 
quote unquote normalized to some degree or it's a film so okay a, a film right is that, is that what you're saying like well when you say normalized what you mean like we, like okay this is during times of slavery but to make it funny they're in a slave-like condition but they're still people you, you're humanizing them to some degree the white folks that did no, no, we was, whoa, 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 whoa. we was always humans. Yeah. But listen, no, the biggest no. misconception in the world is that we were slaves. We was never slaves. We was always people. We were enslaved. We were enslaved. We, were we enslaved. was always people. We were never slaves. Okay, but our enslavers didn't look at it this way. Right, so, right. What I'm saying is that's the picture that you, what you're humanizing slaves. Is that part of the issue that you might think you might be having? Uh, I think I'm. Gonna, or you I, would have. I'm. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have several issues. That is that slave of, slavery. That's why not, you need some Jews. A, a funny matter. <laughs> But anything so can be funny. So that's what the issue he felt Anything like can be funny. But yeah, I agree. And the Everything brilliance can be funny. is if you I agree. take what's deemed not funny or taboo mm -hmm. and make it powerfully funny, that's the genius. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and yeah. that's taking they power back from the people who no, I, I, have, a, have an image. I think you can do it, bro. It's supposed to be. Yeah. I think right. you can do it. Look, I know this might be going too far. I don't know what too far is. <laughs> and I, it may not ain't nothing be, too far in this podcast. Look, the rum punch done kicking. Ain't nothing too far at this point. But as I was I was just thinking about this. And I was like, okay, so what's the movie poster? Remember the, the, uh, the <laughs> movie Will Smith did, Emancipation? Yeah. Where there's yeah. the famous photo of the black dude yeah, whip with, the, with the whip. Back. Yeah. So I was thinking, what if it was that, like a, a dude with his back to the poster where you could see it? Yeah. But the whip marks spelled out LOL. Hilarious. It's like slavery, the comedy. LOL. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, again, that this early stages of me just going, what could be the worst shit? What could be this? You, what could be that? You and Dr. Umar are going to have to have a long talk after that. <laughs> I, 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 Dr. Umar are going to be like, the brother Aries Spears. Yeah, I like that. Like the back turn, LOL, and you, and you see like there's somebody, you know, servicing the, <laughs> the a, a white miss. Wow. Miss you wilding. You took it there. <laughs> you took it there. She blowing him while he's fucking yeah. his back. <laughs> his whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I don't know. Is that too far? That's for further than what you for said. For celebrable reasons. <laughs> oh, oh, you can't have that hanging. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe you can't. I don't know. We got to wrap, wrap this up soon. So, uh, how, you and, how you and Vlad get cool? You know, Vlad just initially had me on to do a couple. And you on, like, really giving your 100% opinion on very many things. Yeah, you're recurring. Absolutely. You got a recurring I think, part. I think Vlad knows, like, some shit popped off. Call yeah. area. Yeah. Vlad, you have Vlad, no filter in what you talk about. No, okay. Uh, Vlad, um... He even said, "Shout out to Vlad, by the way. Let's do a podcast, man. You know, so it, it just started out as me making appearances, uh, and then you know, when you read the comments, people are like, yo, these two niggas is, they, they should have a show. They should do a, so you know, just trying to capitalize on what might be a moment, right? You know, see if we could turn it into something else. So y'all got something together now. We're gonna start something together okay. uh, when I get off this Canadian run that I'm doing this month. So like gotcha. in March, That's I mean dope. Uh, May. Okay, May. that's dope. That's dope. Yeah." All right, so so wait, that we'll play right into that. So let them know where you're gonna be. Let them know where to find you. All that good stuff. Oh shit, um, yeah, um, y'all could go to my website, airyspears.com. I'm touring all over the country. Uh, I got some really important dates. Uh, May 14th, I believe, uh, or maybe May 11th. I'm at. I mean, I gotta find out. But May 12th is Mother's Day, so May 11th. What, what day is May 11th? May 11th is. Uh, Saturday. Okay, so it's May 11th. I know, I got to show uh, that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be at the uh, Wilbur in Boston, uh, the Wilbur Theater. Uh, May 18th, I will be at the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden. Woo! Uh, November 8th, uh, the Honolulu Theater in Honolulu, Hawaii, right. and then everywhere in Canada, all, all throughout April, and uh, all that shit. Are these new theater dates predicated by the yeah. social media? Yeah. You're doing Hulu by yourself? Yes. Wow. That's yeah. dope as fuck, bro. Congrats. Yeah, you going home? Wait, you from Harlem, right? No, uh, Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. Damn, that's dope, bro. You, you're not excited for that? I am, but I'm trying not to go to, you know what I mean? Fuck that, bro. <laughs> I'm doing New Brunswick, New Jersey. I'm like, nigga, yeah. I'm home. Yeah. And I'm from Brooklyn. If I get yeah. cl that close to home, I'm excited. Right, right. Oh, no, you got to celebrate that, bro. You know, it's wild. Like, I've done, I've done the garden quite a few times, but it's always been with other comics. Right, right. Like, the biggest show I did was me, Tracy Morgan, and a bunch of other people. Of course, it was sold out. Right. But this is me by myself. You know, 5,000 seats. Yo, so man. Like, nah, oh, fuck. Shit. That's big, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm you know, I was Tracy Morgan's opening act for two, like two and a half years. You know, I love Tracy, but he sounds like a New York City drag queen. Tracy <laughs> Morgan. Uh, I can't do a good Tracy Morgan, but you, you picture a New York yeah. City drag queen. I told that baby. Uh, <laughs> Tracy Morgan. Like Wendy Williams. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's big, man. Congratulations Thank on that, bro. You, bro. Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank what's up. That's what's and up. And also, uh, check out my podcast. It's called Spears and Steinberg, uh, available on all streaming platforms. Slide into my DMs. I'll send you the links. I'll chop it up with you. And like I always say, I know it's over 500 episodes, but start from the beginning. It's very critical to callbacks, context. It's like masturbation and potato chips. Once you start, you can't stop. I guarantee <laughs> you, it's, it's, it's comedy coke, baby. It's pure. Yo, shout out to Steinberg, man. I worked with the cat that he does the podcast with. I worked yeah. with him before. I forgot what city we were in. Super cool dude. Super cool dude. I watched clips of their podcast. Okay. Him, Steinberg, and Aries gave me the super shout out. They said very, very favorable things. I, I appreciate that, bro. Just while I, I have you sitting on the couch. Again, man. I, I really I, appreciate I, I, that, bro. I'm glad we finally, you know, because I just was like. Now yeah, we know. It was just two know. New York, two yeah. New York yeah, things yeah, that was yeah, like, yo, yeah, yeah. I ain't going to go that way. And you was like, yeah, I ain't going to yeah, come that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But the respect was always there, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like you was on comedy but way before I was. I saw you on TV. Yeah. You, you play a small part of me even wanting to do this. Like, because yeah. I was like, yo, I see another comic on TV. Like, oh, shit, that's another way I could go. You know, the other, the other, the other thing I hope to get from this is like, you know, once we have these kind of moments with the right kind of people, or once I do, uh, they can spread the legend, man. He's right. not like that. He's, right, yeah. right, right. He's a good dude. No, that's yeah. why when K yeah. hit me and said, Aries said he'll do the podcast. K hit me, right? Yo, Aries said he'll do the podcast. I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> and then he texts, he DM I thought you were going to go, no fucking way. <laughs> look, look, he DM me like, yo, I, I heard about the podcast. I'll be, I'm, I'll be happy to do it. I'll be happy to do it. I was like, oh, hell yeah, bro. Yeah. And he texted me his number immediately. Hit me right here. I was like, oh, shit, Aries really going to do this shit. Yeah. Look at the calendar, like, yo, you free this date? He was like, yep. I texted him like, yo, we fucking got Aries, yo. Yeah, we was all hype, man. Because we was based, we based that all on, all that hesitancy was right. based on our not doing our due diligence, like you said earlier, on what we have heard about you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, I'm, I'm glad we did Thanks, this, bro. Man. I'm, I'm listen, man, super. At the end of the day, dude, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I, you know, listen, I've curbed a lot of the arrogance, cockiness, because right. I was 20. I was making right, money. Right, I right, 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 right. So when I'm from New York, and so I'm an arrogant. No, so you said five fucking development deals. I got one and was like, <laughs> I got one and was like, the whole world's on my dick. Yeah. So you got five. Yeah, so, so I literally said that one time. Long story. I was like arguing with niggas that I was drunk, and I was like, yo, the whole world's on my dick. And all my boys like, yo, son, calm the fuck down. Listen, man. You had a Kanye I, moment? I, I, I did. Like I said, I... So if I would have had five, nigga, I'd have been like... Yeah. I, I just, I just, you know, would love people to know that deep down inside, man, like, I'm I'm, I'm a cool, humble-ass nigga, man. Like, like a, a lot of comics, and I won't say no names, but I'll say it off the record, but a lot of comics, like, you can't go in the green room and look at them directly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah talk yeah. to them. Yeah. You're an asshole. Dude, I'm telling you... I don't buy into this Hollywood shit, man. Okay. I'm the most humble, approachable nigga in the world. As long as you respect me and yeah. you come to me with respect, I give it back. Last thing, last question. I was going to ask this earlier, but so one of the narratives that we've heard about you was yeah. everything you, you cleared up so far. I heard you don't like to have black comics <laughs> open for you. You don't like to have black That's features. Not That's not true. Okay, my, my, please, my please. Very first feature do you do a two-man show or a three-man show? Sometimes three, but mostly two. Okay, go. Yeah. Uh, my very first feature, a uh, brother named Gerard Guillory out of Atlanta. I know yeah, Gerard. Yeah, 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 Gerard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? He was my guy. Um, but there were some things that we fell out about that had nothing to do with creative yeah. or stand-up, just personal. It was a bitch. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> you see how quick he said yeah, yeah. yeah. He said that. I always thought it was a bitch. <laughs> so we, we parted <laughs> ways, and then my next... He said there was some creative... Doing titties, there was yeah, some yeah, creative yeah, shit we fell out about. Some creative shit we fell out about. Some creative shit we fell out about. I do that. <laughs> uh, and then my second opener uh, was a Nicaraguan brother who I, who I uh, fucked with out of Miami named Neri, and now it's Andy Steinberg. And I always said... I don't have a problem working with other black comics, but my issue has become sometimes when I work with black comics, they they really play a lot on the how many niggas in here is broke? Where the bitches at with the weaves? Yeah. How many y'all yeah. got roaches? Yeah. You know, white people, black people. Yeah. And it's like my audience is so diverse. I don't just want to do a Def Jam show. Yeah. So if you come out and do 20 minutes of that shit, and I do 10, 15 minutes of that. They've already seen 35, yeah. maybe 40 minutes of that shit. Yeah. So I just like comics like Gerard, who was well versed. Yeah. Would talk yeah. about different shit, you know, would, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I remember one one time, uh, me, Alex, and uh, Guy T, we all just happened to be coming back from shows and met up at Baggage Claim. And we were talking about this very same thing. And then Alex said the best shit. He was like, you know, if there's a guy that wants to talk about wild, raunchy shit, there's a night for him 
for that. But if you open it for me and your ending joke is, and that's how you eat corn out of bitch booty hole, give it up for your headliner. <laughs> and now I'm supposed to talk about my trip to France. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you know, as much as I love my people, that part of it got to be right. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, I say this, and this is where my arrogance is going to kick in. I've been doing this 33 years. I have earned my fucking stripes. To any of these local niggas that got something to say about me and that, who the fuck I look at? I'm the main event. Who the fuck I look like answering to the undercard? Yeah. Yep. I'm the main event, goddammit. And I run my shit how I run my shit. If y'all, you don't like it, fuck you. Right. I get it. I get it. Have you had an issue? Last, last, I swear this, I, I said like, have you had an issue with you bring, or you have a feature and they one the two nights and want to do what you was doing? <laughs> I've had, I've, I've, and this is the other thing. I've had a black feature and I've said, hey man, just, can you do me a favor? Can you stay clear of maybe this or this? And he goes, I got you. And he went and did exactly that. Wow. I had a feature and I'm not going to say the city because then they're going to know who I'm talking about. <laughs> not even a feature. He was a host. He was a host. We do Thursday. Let's say we do Thursday through Sunday. So first show Thursday. Right. He does his set. Feature me. I go on and something happens in the room. And it gives me, they throw me a alley oop. You know when they give you that sweet, right. they you like, oh, I'm gonna run with this for ten minutes, right. and it's just crowd work. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. For ten, and you yeah. killing. It's still, and the next night, he's talking about that thing, trying to recreate that. Damn and the right. next show, he's talking about that, trying to recreate. Yes. And even so much so that like management and waitstaff is like, is he trying to do the thing you did last night? And I'm like, right. yeah, <laughs> that's what I don't like. Don't do me two days in because now, you saw you how it worked for that me. To just any feature or a black feature? That in, in that case, it was a black feature, but any feature. Don't do me because you saw it working for me two nights in or three right. nights in. Right. Don't do that. I've had very many features. And after a while, it always turns into, bro, I... <laughs> bro, come on. Like, you know, I do that. You know, I, right, right. But it's like now we just up and running. So right. it's, just, it's a well oiled machine. So now it's like, I'll just, do. bro, right. you know what this is, bro. Like, right. come on. And that's yeah. why I, I bring a feature, like a lot of comics. Cause you know, you know how we roll. You know, we, right. we know the game plan. So I don't have to worry about that. And it's not, a, I want to make this abundantly clear. It's not about being afraid or worried oh, that they're going to get to something before you do. No, it, like, no. yo, you could do my whole set before me and I could come out and do it and still be fine. Well, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's the, what I've heard is he, because he's scared to follow. Yeah. Niggas. Yo, when I'm telling you, son, yo, my crowd work is better than a lot of niggas written material. I'm a beast, nigga, when it come to that crowd shit, my guy. I'm a fucking animal. So, I'm, and again, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm to my own. I say this so humbly. I'm, 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 I'm trying to tell you. I'm, the only people I've ever been afraid to follow is Dave Chappelle, uh, God rest his soul, and Patrice O'Neal. Yeah. They're the only two niggas that put nervousness in me. Other than them, nah, yo, I, I go up against anybody yeah. and hold my own, dude. I've always said it. I've, I've always said, because I was always taught that, when you're on stage, it doesn't matter who was on before you or who was right. on after you. That right. that ten or twenty minutes or thirty right. minutes is your thirty minutes. Right. So whatever they now sometimes I, I say that to say sometimes if they blow that shit up in front of you, you gotta you spend, gotta work. You gotta spend your first two yeah. trying to get them back yeah. to. Yeah, you gotta put a, a work. You gotta get a settle to the room it's, first. Right, right, go right. You can't just right. go like yeah, that nigga. All right, no, you gotta be like all right, y'all. Okay, yeah. hold up. Well, I went on one night at the Dave Spell at the Laugh Factory because I wanted to. Right. Nobody else wanted to go on. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I went on and I was like, yo, you have not, you know how you watch a heavyweight fight and the nigga get knocked out in the first round, but the people are still there like, okay, well, we'll just let these two niggas fight. I said, I'm that match. <laughs> I'm that match. Like the nigga had knocked the nigga out in the first round, but the people were like, we still want to see some fights. So I'm like, that's me. Right. And they just started laughing. I was like, all right, let, now let's have a good right. time. I was like, if y'all leave and leave, if y'all fuck with me, fuck with me. And that right there was like but but the thing that you did that was the proper thing to do was you addressed it from an honest standpoint right yeah, you didn't come out and just go i'm gonna do my act yeah, yeah. and act like that shit didn't happen yeah, okay right. here's the i swear this is the last question what's the thing you hate that comedian the, the, that comedians do i hate i, I hate i hate Laughing at your joke. Uh, thank thank y'all for letting me just come out here and just work out some stuff. Oh, when it's not going good, I was just working some stuff out. Thank y'all for letting me come out here. And I hate this. And so then I said, "Oh, comics are laughing." So I said, "Wait, wait, wait!" I said, "It's like nigga, it's not that. It's not going to be right. that funny. It's, right. Whatever I guarantee, whatever you say is not going to be that funny. Right. So stop doing that. I hate that. My two things are uh, 
white comedians that pander to black artists. Oh, oh, oh talk yeah. like niggas, act yeah, like niggas. Yeah, that, that niggas irritates me. You are really great at what you do, a la Bill Burr. And I've seen Bill yeah. Burr perform in front of an all black crowd as Bill Burr. Yes. And destroy it. Yeah. Versus some of them dudes that come out there. Cause you know, niggas, we eat that up. Boy, they white boy crazy. Yeah. That yeah. nigga said show this. We eat that. It's stuff. like a white boy singing on the Apollo, singing right. soul right. on the yeah. Apollo. Right, yeah. right. Once you hit the who the ah, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, yeah. Right. it's a note, it's a note. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have my one that irritates me. What's okay, before you get to that, no, the white, wait, wait, what's, white, what's, the white comedian. Wait, what's your second the one? The white comedian, I'm oh, talking okay. about. What's, this, what's your second one? The second one are comedians who do remember when comedy with music mm. and shit. If you, you, you play a track that niggas, oh. It's cheating. Yeah. It's cheating. It's, yeah. you it's, got cheating. You, you it's cheating. cheating. Right. Yeah. If you need a song played to tell a joke, it's not a joke. Right. If you can't tell that joke without a song or a fucking prop, it's not a joke because yeah. it's predicated on that other thing. Yeah, right. Do you feel that way even if they use one song? Because I believe it can be done if you do it within the context, depending on what the context of the joke is. Right. If, but to do a whole, I've seen niggas do whole sets. If it's your I'm intro, if it's your intro, you play that to walk up and you say something about it when you walk up. Right. Okay, and then let it go and get to your set. Right. I'll give you that. But if 10, 20 minutes in, you like, and then you have to be in a club and, uh, oh, yeah. nah, nah, bro, nah. Play it again, nah. DJ. And then you'd be like, uh, <laughs> no. The only thing, look, I don't care who says they did it first or who yeah. did it best. Yeah. The only person I've ever seen do it and JB do that Smooth. shit and bring a room down. JB Smooth. JB Smooth. Yep. Oh, JB. JB is different. Yeah. JB Smooth did the DMX song, and you hear that shit. You could be on a stagecoach. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Yo, room down. Everybody else, I'm like this. Nah, you, you don't need that. Before you say it, I, I'm sorry. No, no, I don't. I'm not. But, but, no, go ahead, go ahead. This, again, Chris had a great quote. Because uh, when you do Cobbs in San Francisco, I love Cobbs in San Francisco. They they put the comedian's picture up with the quote, and Chris basically said something to the extent of, "Every comic is like a pastor, and his audience is his congregation." And this is why I thought the Cat Williams thing was so pointless, because while you shitting on all these comics, it doesn't change anything. Their right. fan base is so loyal to them. Right. Yeah, your fan base will go, "Yeah, Cat, you got them." Right. But theirs are gonna go, "Okay, whatever." And defend him to the end. And I say that because JB Smooth, the the the, the intro where Cat comes out with the rap music that yeah. they said was, yeah, yeah. was phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. JB Smooth did that on Def Jam. Yeah. Yeah. And when I pointed that out, all the comments were defending Cat. Yeah. Man, so what? Or <laughs> this or that. And yeah. I went, Chris Rock, past the congregation. Nigga, you yeah. read comments? Yeah. You out of your mind. I do too. Do you know why I do that? You better not read no comments. I have to. Game tape. That's game tape. Those baby. motherfuckers. Because wow. whoever they're going to believe whoever they believe. Right. So no why am I going to argue with a motherfucker that is yeah. blindly loyal to this person? You know. Those are the people. Those are the people. You only doing that because of your brother. Bro. Or after the, after the shit what happened with bitch ass Will. Yo. Why are you talking about it? It ain't got nothing to do with you. That's my fucking brother. What do you mean it don't got nothing to do with me? That's, yeah. that's my brother. That's my brother. It got nothing to do with me. It's my brother. Right. But. In the comments, they don't because they fuck with Will, so they never they never gonna understand my point of view because they fuck with this guy. Whatever side you on, you cannot understand. You can't even understand the other side. I I, I want to arm myself for any potential thing that someone can say to me at a show because if if you give me an answer, that oh I'm yeah, ready for yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I got yeah, yeah. five to respond. I didn't to think of that. Answer. I didn't think of that. That was a good one. So that's yeah. game tape. For I didn't me. think of that. You're right. You're, You're right. You're right. You're right. I notice this. Most people in the audience that want to talk shit. They're a 1776 musket shot. Yeah. They're yeah. reload. One time. And yeah. And that's it. One time. So yep. when you hit me with that, that's I'm gonna hit you, you with my AR-15. Yeah. So if I if I can read comments and go, this sounds like something somebody could Might say. Might yell me. out or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what's yeah. my 10 comments for that? Yeah. I didn't think okay, game tape. I like it's that. Game tape. I like that. Yeah. Bruh, clearly you can see we can do this all day. We can do this all night. <laughs> we can do this all day. We got shit to do. We got comedy clubs to get to. You got a spot tonight? Uh no, not tonight. You got a spot tonight? 
Not tonight. You getting up tonight? No, I'm not. All right, I'm gonna head to, over to the Laugh Factory. Yo, I just want to thank you, bro, for your time. Hey, man. Time is the most valuable thing we have on this planet, and you just shared a lot of it oh, with us. Brother. I oh, appreciate man. that. I'm glad we came to this understanding yes, sir. that yes, it's just sir. two New York niggas that's like this. Yes, I ain't sir. gonna say what's up if you don't say what's up. Yeah, yeah. It's sir. a New York thing, bro. You know what yes, it is. It's all love. I've always been a fan. And, I will and, continue and to be no, a fan. And no from one New Yorker to another, and one black man to another, for whatever it's worth, dog. I got you back, man. Appreciate I that, bro. Love. Ain't nobody ever put dirt on your name. Love. Tell them where you at. We you Find you where. Yo, you know where we at next weekend, no, the 12th, 13th, and 14th. I'm back home, baby. New Brunswick, New Jersey at the Stress Factory. So all my family, everybody, make sure y'all are there. Best club. Just so you know, I when he it. says I'm back home and all my family and friends show up, that nigga will be running the light every night. Just so y'all know. <laughs> I'm doing 35 minutes. That nigga will be running the light every 40 night. 40 minutes. Fox, where you at? <laughs> uh, this weekend, we are in Tacoma, Washington at Nate Jackson Super Funny Comedy Clubs. First time there. Looking forward to it. And... Uh, mm -hmm. Find me on Instagram, Joe Feezy, J O E F E E Z I E. Yeah. All my info right here. Look right here, Magic of TV. And add my TikTok now. I got a TikTok now. And uh, I'm in Tacoma this weekend. Next week in New Brunswick, New Jersey. The weekend after that, we are in Schaumburg, uh, Chicago. 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 At the uh, improv in Schaumburg. And then I go on vacation, taking my son to the Bahamas for his fourth birthday. Charleston, Dad, I love you so much. Uh, and uh, come back and get right back on the road. I need to take a break for a little bit and, you know, sit in some clear water and some sand. Where you at, fam? Uh, I'm going to be all throughout Canada. Oh, wait, wait, you said the Can Canada run. What's the Canada yeah. run? Where you going? I like Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, uh, Winnipeg, uh, and I'm like four or five other places. Okay, I've done Vancouver. I yeah. love Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver's great. Vancouver's dope as hell. Yeah. I did Vancouver. I did Edmonton. I did, I did uh, Toronto. Right. I haven't never, been to Toronto in over like 15 years. I've never been to the other places. How you feel yeah. about Montreal being done? Uh, I'm excited. I mean, you know, I used to do Montreal during mm -hmm. the festival. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, That's what I mean, the festival being done. Right, 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 right. Yeah, but now I'm doing this by myself. So, you know, and, and the response has been overwhelming. There, there's been so many people going, yo, man, we can't wait till you come to Canada. Dope, dope, so. dope. All the best, man. Thank you so much again. And happy birthday. Ladies and gentlemen. Tomorrow. Hey, happy birthday, bro. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday Yo, to you, bro. Yo, it's live from the green room. I potentially think this is the best episode we've done so far, but we're going to let y'all decide. Y'all watch it. Y'all leave comments and subscribe and send yeah. your questions in, and we'll see y'all next week. It's live from the green room. Peace. Peace. Yo, I didn't mean to bring that up. I didn't know. Yeah, no, 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 no.